individually, and each senator will be given an opportunity to vote yay or nay. Do I make myself clear, Mr. Lieutenant Governor? Senator Figures, you just have to make the motion. Thank you. Well, I will make the motion to adopt. All right, Secretary, using the call the roll. roll. I'll vote. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. No. Mr. Barfoot. No. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Burkett. Mr. Butler. Mr. Chambliss. No. Mr. Chastain. Ms. Coleman Madison. Ms. Dunn. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Aye. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Holly. Mr. Jones. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh. Mr. McClendon. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Ms. Sanders Fortier. Mr. Schofield. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Shellnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Mr. Ward. Mr. Watley. Mr. Williams. Uh, six eyes, 24 nays. The amendment fails. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank, thank you, you members Figures. of the Senate. That was expected. But I have another amendment, um, Mr. President, that I'd like to offer, and then um, I'd like to speak to the amendment. All right. Secretary, read and receive the amendment. Amendment to House Bill 314 by Senator Figures. On page 8, after line 27, insert the following new section 9 and renumber the remaining sections accordingly. Section 9, the Department of Medicaid shall promulgate rules to expand eligibility for Medicaid. S Senator Figures. Thank you, Mr. President. You know, one of the reasons for Roe versus Wade was that before it was actually legalized, many women were having abortions that ended up being botched, maiming themselves and some even killing themselves because it wasn't legal. While people with means who could afford to have a safe one could send their daughters, nieces, girlfriends, mistresses, whomever, where they could get one. So this law came about so that everybody could be treated equally and would have that, health, that, that safe health care. And the reason for this amendment is because, you know, we chose not to expand Medicaid, and we all know why we chose not to expand Medicaid in the state of Alabama, because President Barack Obama was the one who initiated it, and we all know why you didn't want it, because he initiated it. We don't have to really go there. But Mr. When, this goes in, when this goes into effect, because I know you all are going to pass it, and when we start losing doctors here, which we have a shortage of doctors anyway, people at least need to have that medical, that quality medical care, because we know that it will be, it's going to affect poor women 
and affect health care of poor women more so than anybody else because those with means will be able to go someplace where they can get one that is safe and legal. So I want to uh, offer this amendment and ask for a roll call vote. I'd like to speak to the amendment. Uh, Mr. President, point of order here. This Yes, state your point of order. This, this uh, amendment is not germane to the bill. Yes, like it is. A ruling on that. It's a health care bill, Senator. This is about health. We're talking about doctors. We're talking about women being able to have access to the medical professionals who can give them uh, an abortion right. should they choose Senator to have Figures. one. Chair rules it's germane. Thank so, you. Senator Figures. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. I'll, I'll ask for the vote, Mr. President. Ask for a long roll, uh, roll call vote. Secretary, call the roll. Urge members vote now. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. No. Mr. Barfoot. No. Mr. Beasley. No. Mr. Burkett. No. Mr. Butler. No. Mr. Chambliss. No. Mr. Chastain. No. Ms. Coleman Madison. Ms. Dunn, Mr. Elliott, Ms. Figures, aye. Mr. Gavan, Mr. Gudger, Mr. Holly, Mr. Jones, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Marsh, Mr. McClendon, Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Ms. Sanders Fortier, Mr. Schofield, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman, Aye. Mr. Stutz, no. Mr. Wagner, no. Mr. Ward, no. Mr. Watley, no. Mr. Williams, no. Uh, six eyes, 24 nays, uh, Senator Figures Amendment 2 fails. Senator thank you, Figures. Mr. President, and thank you, members of the Senate. Before I offer this next amendment, uh, you know, in all of these, these abortion bills that you all have passed through the years, taking away a woman's choice to choose for herself what she wants to do with her body, was there ever anything in there saying what would happen to the man who impregnated her? Has that ever been addressed? Not during the time that I've been here. It hasn't. It hasn't. You know, we all know it's a man's world. What is the rest of that song that uh, James wrote? It's a man's world. But what about the girl? It be but it wouldn't be nothing. Woman or girl. Nothing without a woman or a girl. Amen. <laughs> But why you all want to control our bodies, I will never, ever know. And, 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 and I know that many of you have daughters. But let me say to my Republican brothers who sit over here with the Democrats, y'all didn't have to leave. <laughs> we, we are a peaceful group. You didn't have to leave from over here. Oh, okay, Senator Elliott, good. All right, all right, that's my boy from Baldwin County, okay. I just got a little restless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, th this next amendment, you know, you all are always trying to put the laws on us. I want you all to vote for this one so we can have some equality about this thing. Okay? <laughs> Mr. President, I offer this amendment. All right, Secretary Reed received the amendment. the long roll call vote. I saved the best for last. Uh-oh. Amendment to House Bill 314 by Senator Figures. On page 8, after line 15, insert the following new subsections C and D. 
C, a man who has a vasectomy shall be guilty of a Class A felony. D, a man who attempts to have a vasectomy shall be guilty of a Class C felony. I move for the adoption of the amendment. I urge you to vote no, members. Using, <laughs> using the, the long roll, right, Bravo. You're talking about life. All right, Secretary, call the roll. Life. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Burkett. Got a conflict of Mr. Him. Butler. Mr. Chambliss. No. Mr. Chastain. No. Ms. Coleman Madison. Aye. Twice. Ms. Dunn. <laughs> Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Aye. Thrice. <laughs> Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Holly. Mr. Jones. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh, Mr. McClendon, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Ms. Sanders Fortier, Mr. Schofield, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton, <laughs> Mr. Smitherman, <laughs> Mr. Stutz, <laughs> Mr. Wagner. Mr. Ward, Mr. Watley, Mr. Williams, <laughs> all right, uh, five eyes, 21 nays, uh, Senator Figures Amendment 3 fails. Thank you, Mr. President, thank, thank you, you members Figures. of the Senate, but let me tell you, Senators, Senators, I could have offered an amendment that said that it is mandatory that all males get a vasectomy at age 21, and when you decided to get married and wanted to have children, you can get it reversed. But I didn't. I have one last couple of questions for two couple of uh, questions uh, for you, Senator Chambliss, and then I will turn the microphone over to my colleague. In this bill, I noticed, and it was really strange to me, if you would look on page three, on line 20, starting at line 24. It reads, in the United States Declaration of Independence, the principle of natural law that, quote, all men are created equal, end quote, was articulated. The self-evident truth found in natural law that all human beings are equal from creation was at least one of the bases for the anti-slavery movement, the woman's suffrage movement, the Nuremberg war crimes trials, and the American civil, right, civil rights movement. If those movements had not been able to appeal to the truth of universal humane equality, they could not have been successful. I just want to leave by saying I take offense by you putting that language in this bill, particularly when a state like Alabama had a constitution that said that people of color weren't even a 100% whole human being. So obviously, in your view at that time, we were not created equal. So I really take offense to that language in this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Figures. Mr. President, I uh, appreciate the dialogue, and um, obviously we've had a lot of good discussion, and I would yield to uh, my colleague. Senator Calderman Madison, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I want to ask some questions. First of all, I, I want to thank Senator Figures um, and the comments that she made, in particular the last one. Um, 
as I look at this and I watch the last vote, it's amazing how we vote in our own interest. Now, we understand that the women in this chamber are a minority, but one of these days that's going to change. And Senator Figures, amendment just might get passed. But I'm hoping that your wives, your daughters, in particular those that are in high school and college are watching. Because this is not about just this generation, it's about the generations to come. I want to read you, and some of you were in Judiciary Committee. This is a testimony from one of the ladies who came to speak. And she writes, whether you are for or against access to abortion in Alabama, this bill makes no sense. The notion that this bill, if enacted into law, would be the vehicle for overturning Roe v. Wade is speculative and remote at best. There are at least 14 cases already in the pipeline. Two are currently at the Supreme Court, including one from Alabama, four at the federal courts of appeal. Now, Alabama taxpayers are footing the bill for these unconstitutional actions. We've already paid out $1.7 million to Southern Poverty Law Center, and uh, I forgot how much we paid to Planned Parenthood, which really didn't make any sense about that bill. We sat here and we voted down support for Planned Parenthood, and in the name it says it all. I don't know where our minds are. We vote down an organization that helps people to plan when they want to have children so we don't find ourselves in a situation of having children that we don't want or getting pregnant when we are not ready. And it helps them to understand about their body, gives them that support, yet we voted Planned Parenthood and what they do in their mission down, and we went even further to close them down because those women who chose and under law had the right to have an abortion. That was just one thing that they did. Out of all the other counseling and good things that they did, you are always going to have those women who are going to have abortion. Senator Figures gave some good examples. We all know about the back alleys, the basements. Uh, people will try go going online now. That's going to be very popular now of how you can mix a concoction to have an abortion. People are going to have abortion. The problem is it's going to always be unsafe, inaccessible for those people who are, have lesser means. But as been previously stated, for those with the means, it doesn't matter that Alabama can ban it. They're going to find another state. They'll find another country. They'll fly off. They'll have their kid, and they'll come back. And nobody knows the wiser except the girls club, I guess. But Alabama taxpayers is going to be footing the bill for this unconstitutional action. In the admitting privileges lawsuit, the state paid again $1.7 million to ACLU and Planned Parenthood. If the Supreme Court uh, denies review of this case with the methods ban, an award will exceed that amount. But regardless of what the Supreme Court does with the methods ban, the state did not uh, appeal the 2,000-foot ban for which it uh, uh, entitled several hundred thousands, uh, which it will, will be entitled to several hundred thousands uh, of dollars, and, of course, 51,000 from Governor Bentley's Medicaid payments could have gone to Planned Parenthood for planning services. But we decided to use that to pay lawsuits. Senator Smithman has stood here, who is a constitutional professor, and already told you that this bill is unconstitutional, but that is not the issue because we don't care. This bill is not about pro-life or the right to life. This bill is about control. And with that, let me just say, the bill sponsored told us in the committee that this bill was about overturning Roe v. Wade. It has nothing to do about the quality of care, about addressing the medical needs of the state of Alabama. For me, it is about choice, and it's not just about, it's not about my choice. 
It's about the choice of all women. I bought a T-shirt last year when I was in D.C. because I liked the saying that it has. And it said that those who would deny the freedom for others, in this case it is the freedom of choice, deserves it not for themselves. End of quote. President Abraham Lincoln. We have children in foster care. I don't know how many there are in the state. Those children are not being adopted every day. And with this, if we're going to force a woman to have a child that she doesn't want, if a child conceives a child, age six, seven, a time she becomes a, uh, at the point where she can conceive, we know children are being molested and raped every day. We know girls are becoming pregnant every day. If every pregnancy resulted in a child being born, how are we going to care for all of those children? Are we going to open more foster homes like we open more prisons? Are we going to go back to the youth homes where you just um, cattle them in like we do the mentally ill in this state that we don't take care of? We have a history of wanting to, we don't even address the, the, the problem after the cow is out the gate, out the barn, so to speak. If this bill had anything in it, any substance that provided support to the woman, if it provided, we don't want to really pay for daycare. Working mothers, that's one of the number one issues that working mothers have is providing daycare. We say that if you get food stamps or we want to require you now to work or to volunteer, and we understand that a person receiving food stamps is no, is no burden on the state. That is all federal dollars. But we want to put requirements on that. I can remember when uh, the state stopped paying for saying, well, you can have as many children as you want, but we're not going to pay for them. This goes kind of counterproductive for where we were before. We've come around to saying we're not going to pay. You can have another child, but we're not going to pay welfare. We want to cut people off welfare. We just passed a bill out of this Senate that cut people who, uh, if you're laid off of a job, to reduce, to reduce the unemployment benefits that you get. You understand what? I, connect the dots in what we are doing here. We are talking about families. We are talking about children who are part of those families who come here through no fault of their own. My, my problem with this bill and I like Senator Figures, I don't believe in abortions either. But my problem with the sin in this bill is not that we abort the child that's not wanted at the point that the, that, that the mother can safely do this. The sin to me is bringing a child into this world and not taking, taking care of them. The sin for me is that this state does not provide adequate care. We don't provide education. And then when the child is born and that we know that mother is indigent and she cannot take care of that child, we don't provide any support systems for that mother. It would be great if we had all of these facilities that were said, we want you to have the child. We're going to provide all the care that you need to nurture that child to help them. We're going to provide the medical care if you need it. And if there are complications, we're going to assist you with that. We're going to provide resources. And then after that child is born and you decide you cannot keep that child, here is a facility, here's a family we've already arranged for this. We're going to make sure that this child is cared for, this child is nurtured, that this child has a chance. We don't give them that chance. We are three strikes and you're out. The child grows up into a home and all he sees is what the world has to offer. He becomes involved with what is out there, maybe cracks and drugs and everything else because his mother doesn't know how to take him. You got a child raising a child. And they are happening younger and younger. So the child gets caught into the system and next thing you know, he's a part of the system. One of our senators here 
from Shelby County is, has been adamant in reforming our prison system. But we know that's where the child is going to end up if he doesn't have a strong foundation and a good beginning. So we want to bring them here, but we don't want to take care of them. We say that education is a function of the state, and we want to talk about all of that, but we don't want to own it. And it's the same way with this. We want to pass this type of restrictive law to take away choice from women about the most precious thing that she has, all she has. At the office, somebody has a sign up on their door that says, all we got is us. They're saying in their little section, we all have to work together because we really can't depend on anybody else to help us. So this bill doesn't do anything to address the real issue. And for the life of me, I keep trying to figure out why do we pass bills like this when we don't have any support in place to help people in the city of Birmingham, we have a saying that says, the people are the city. I would say we need to put that up here. The people, this is the people's house. This is the people's house. And yes, we all started out like that little child. But just for the grace of God that we had nurturing parents and we had supportive parents, we don't have, that system is broken. Families are broken. The state is not addressing or doing anything to help put families back together and support them. What we are doing is forcing an unfair law and taking away the choice. But it's strange to me. I can remember this same legislative body says, well, we don't want to increase uh, funding for Medicaid. We don't expand, want to expand Medicaid. We want to go to the private market. We want to let people get their own medical insurance. That's why that last amendment was offered. But we don't want to help families to become safe and healthy. But see, we said, you make the choice about your health care. You go out and get your own health insurance. Well, shouldn't I also be able to make the choice about my body? We want to make that choice. They give that to you. But wait a minute. We want to determine this procedure. It wasn't so very long ago when we started talking about the rights of women and you know, maybe we need to come up with a castration bill. I mean, you guys come up with some crazy bills. The probing bill for the women. We want to probe the women. I'd like to be able to just open up your minds and just see what's inside. I really would. I know God made women different. He really did. You all came from a woman. Did you not get anything from her? If you have a mother and she's still alive, deep down she will tell you this is not right. You're shaking your head, but I bet she would. She might not want to tell you. But it is an individual choice. Because, you see, it's not just about this issue. We're talking about an abortion issue, which is... Uh, issue of choice. What about the next issue? Are you going to take another right away from me to choose about something that I ought to be able to decide for myself? Republicans, you y'all, you guys used to say, we want the government out of our life. We want them out of our business. We want them out of our bedroom. Y'all, yeah, you did, you said, want them out of my bedroom. Now you're in my womb. I want you out. You don't control this. You don't own this. And regardless of the point that women are going to stand up and say, regardless of what you say, we will take a stand and show you. And show you, as they said, we can show you better than we can tell you that you will be out. You won't like that. Many men refer to that as being in a doghouse. But what will we do about the next issue that you decide that they don't need that choice? The legislative body in our infinite wisdom can make that choice better than they can. 
What about if somebody decides them? We already have it. But we want to take this right away because this was a right that we've got. I decided I want to marry somebody in another race. We already had that issue about marrying somebody same sex. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous that we would even be talking about it, but we had to pass a law about that. Again, those are personal choices. Marrying somebody of another nationality, marrying somebody of a different religion, marrying somebody who is disabled. We will pass a law down here when we decide Oh, no, a normal person should not be allowed to marry an abnormal person. Whose definition of abnormal are we using? I talked with a friend of mine who's disabled, and, and, and they talked about handicapped. She was talk, talk, talking to her husband, who is also has a disability. They're both paraplegic. She says, I didn't know that we were handicapped. They are very sufficient. They both work. They are smart. They are college-educated graduates. She says, I didn't know that we were handicapped. Whose definitions are we using? And it's the same way with the issues of morals. Whose morals are we using? You know, I don't want to impose my religious beliefs on you. I'll sit down and we can talk about religion all day. I enjoy talking about it. I really do. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give you the same right that God gave me. Here it is. It's up to you whether you accept it. I'm not going to take out something, thunder and lightning, and beat you across the head with it. It's your choice. Because, you see, if I got to drag you screaming and hollering, I don't want you. I would rather have a team of four or five or even one person that I know has got, has got my back than to have a thousand folks behind me that I'm always got to keep a third eye on them watching me. Because I know they're not, they don't have my back. So I don't understand why we insist on pushing people. Now, again, the sponsor says this is about, um, it's not about folks making a choice, it's about protection of, of, the, of the unborn child. And you said that we don't want to put ourselves in God's place. So what do you explain that? I believe that uh, if we terminate the life of an unborn child, we are putting ourselves in God's place. Okay, well, according to the definition of the sponsor in the committee, Basically, a person is when fertilization happens. When the egg meets the sperm, that's a person. That's how it's defined. So, based on what you're saying... If I may, the bill does not define it that way. The bill says that when the female is known to be pregnant... Do you know... Uh, there are so many women. As a matter of fact, there was one woman who was in the hospital. She never showed. She never had any symptoms. And there are a lot of women who carry children and don't have any symptoms. They don't know that they are not pregnant. I don't know how they don't know if they're having a cycle. But usually that's the first case. If you miss something, you say, wait a minute, I need to go and have a check. But for some reason, and not every woman has a cycle every month. But the bottom line is that she went to the doctor and the doctor told her that she was pregnant. And she was a couple of months from giving birth. Now, certainly you wouldn't want to have an abortion at that point. I would definitely be opposed to that. I mean, but that's just so ambiguous to put a statement in there like when the woman should have known, you say? Is known. It, known. When the woman is known. Uh. What, how do you define is known? How do I define it? Uh-huh. It's in the bill. Well, if you don't know, then you're not known to be pregnant. So if you don't know, you're not sure, you don't have no idea, you're not known to be pregnant. That, that's how I would define it. I guess that's a typical male answer. If you, if you, if you, you, you men don't know what you don't know. 
until you get pregnant. I hope that you, don't happen. You have to admit that you don't know I hope that don't what happen. you don't know because you've never been pregnant. Mm. So that is we really the, on that one, that's sir. really the unknown right there. And herein is the problem. You can't get pregnant. You've never been pregnant. You don't know what it's like to be pregnant. You don't know what a woman goes through when she's pregnant. These stories, when these women are having this baby and the man is standing there, breathe, honey, and she says, get out of my face. <laughs> uh, it's real. Senator, I don't know if I'm smart enough to be pregnant, so I, I appreciate the wisdom of our Heavenly Father. Well, it takes two. It does. I don't have to tell you that. The choice of two people. Yes, it takes, exactly. It's the choice of two people. That's right. But it seems like only one is being thrown under the bus here. And I know you say that it doesn't necessarily criminalize women. That's correct. But it comes right down to, you ever been in a situation where this is all you got? Like that sign I said on the door, we are all we got. This is all I have is this body. This is mine. God gave this to me. He didn't give it to you. If he had wanted you to be a woman, he would have made you a woman. So, so Senator, help me understand this. That unborn child... That's all they got. That's all they got. And whose is it? It's God's. God who, creates life. And who did he give it to? He chose woman to carry that. To exactly. Him. Exactly. But you know where I feel about God? We cannot change God's will. Whatever God has for you is for you. And if it is God's will... If it is God's will that that child is going to be born, it doesn't even matter what that woman might want to do. Yeah, there are we, plenty we of them say, I came here, but I can't do it. Yeah, we would disagree on that point, Senator. I, I think God gives us choices, and we can change. God may have a plan for me, a will for me, and then I go off and make bad choices, and I have changed what is going to happen in my life. I, Maybe, I think we have that choice. But you just said God gives us choices. Now, why are you, man... Why are you putting yourself in God's shoes? What makes you think that you are smarter than God? I do not in any way, shape, form, or fashion think myself an ant compared to God. I think you are. What I think is that when God creates that life, that miracle of life inside the woman's womb, that it's not our place as humans to extinguish that life. That's what I believe. But you said God gives us choices. He does. I'd like to offer this amendment.
to see if we can't further clarify that, Mr. Chairman. Secretary Reed received the amendment. Amendment to House Bill 314 by Senator Coleman Madison. On page 8, after line 19, insert the following new section 8 and renumber the remaining sections accordingly. Section 8, if a woman is forced to keep and bear a child based on Alabama law, the state of Alabama shall provide additional parental support and Medicare care to ensure a healthy new beginning for the child and mother by providing prenatal and medical care for the child until the child reaches the age of 13. The prenatal support and medical care shall include any mental or psychological care of the mother if determined necessary by the woman's physician. This medical care provided by the state of Alabama shall include the medical cost of the birth of the child. Senator Coleman Madison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This bill does not address any assistance. We have passed bills several times in this legislative body denying help to those who are most in need. If we, are about, if we truly are about pro-life, instead of reversing Roe v. Wade, if it truly is about the life of the child and the quality of that life and helping that child to grow up to be a functioning, healthy adult, then you should support this bill. So, Mr. Chairman, with that, I um, offer that amendment and request a roll call vote, please. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to speak to the motion. All right. Mr. Senator Chambliss. Mr. President, um, my, my opinion and position is that there are already entities, plans, depart state departments in place that already do this, and I'd urge the membership to vote no. All right. Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. No. No. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Burkett. Mr. Butler. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Chastain. Ms. Coleman Madison. Aye. Ms. Dunn. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Holly. Mr. Jones. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh. Mr. McClendon. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Sanders Fortier. Mr. Schofield. Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton, Mr. Smitherman, Mr. Stutz, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Ward, Mr. Watley, Mr. Williams. Uh, six ayes, 23 nays. Uh, Senator Coleman Madison amendment fails. Senator Coleman Madison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You speak volumes, and I don't take it personally, but you speak volumes to the public, to your constituents, uh, to your daughters, to your wives, because we are caregivers. To the teachers who care for, the, for your children, to those who are in daycare, and while we talk about that there are state agencies, I don't have to tell the public about state agencies. They do a good job with the resources that we provide. But if we compare ourselves with other states, we find that we fall woefully short of really providing for the least. I'm looking at sponsors of, of this bill that's on here. I'm not going to call all, all the names, because these are, are the House sponsors. But a summary of this bill says, this bill would make abortion a felony in all instances unless there's a serious health risk to the mother 
or ectopic pregnancy. That's the only exception it makes. This bill creates the crime of abortion to provide the following. This bill makes it a crime for anyone, including a physician, to perform an abortion. No woman upon whom an abortion is performed shall be criminally or civilly liable. Well, she will have gone through her own personal hell by the time she gets there. Abortion is a class A felony. Attempted abortion is a class C felony. That includes what we talked about, the miscarriage. Exceptions include a serious health risk to the mother. I don't know what we consider serious because we don't consider mental health a serious issue. Removal, these are the serious issues. Removal of a dead, unborn child and an ectopic pregnancy. It was just two or three years ago that this body passed a bill stating that an ectopic pregnancy was not an abortion. All of those women, and I'm sure you know some that had miscarriages, were in violation of the law. They should have been in jail right now, but they are not in jail. This bill, to me, appears to be about control. When the dust settles at the end, and if this bill passes on a roll call vote, you will be telling your wives, your daughters, your granddaughters, and those who support this bill that you don't value the worth of women, regardless of how educated, how sound of mind, how competent, how knowledgeable, no matter how many degrees they have, or how many of these same women you have paid your hard-earned money to educate, that their voice does not matter. We don't trust you to make a decision that is the most personal and precious decision about your own body. And that includes your offsprings, your grandchildren. With that, Mr. Chairman, I have completed my testimony. I just ask the members to vote your own conscience. Don't be led by the herd mentality. Vote your conscience. Thank, thank you. you, Senator Coleman Madison. Senator Chambliss. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. President. And I think uh, we have another colleague that would like to speak on this subject, and I'd yield to my would colleague. You would you give me a minute to go back to my desk to get sure, my material? Sure. Mr. President, um, <clears throat> we've heard a lot of discussion, a lot of testimony today, and uh, I'm certain that there will be just a, a few more minutes that uh, we'll, we'll have uh, some more discussion. With that, I'd um, be willing to dialogue with my majority leader. Thank you, Senator. Mr. President. Senator Reid. I know my colleagues are working on a couple of other um, amendments and documents that they want to bring. Um, Senator Chambliss, thank you. I want to thank the body for their diligence in this process. Uh, I want to thank my colleagues uh, for their diligence in the process, uh, being able to go through this issue, even though we may not all agree on the topics, the idea that we have an opportunity to discuss it, debate it, go through it, vote on it, is what we're supposed to be doing. So I know you've been standing there a long time, Senator, and we've had several of our colleagues, including uh, my leader that's going to be coming up here in just a moment. Uh, as a minority leader to give some of his thoughts and offer some things that are important to him. But I just wanted to say thank you for the process. I appreciate it very much. Thanks for the members staying so attentive and being able to move through this. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Senator Reed. Senator Singleton. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senator, thank you so much for um, standing in the, in the gap. And um, I... While we totally disagree on this bill, I respect the camaraderieship. Uh, you and I met in my office earlier, and, and, and we talked about the process. Yes, sir. I want to say that the last time I, I was at this mic, that emotions got a little high. And I want to say to the, to the staff here that I apologize if I said anything to offend you all or, or did anything. but. I don't apologize for my action because my passion was for real. But I do understand that we have a working staff and to the lieutenant governor and his staff. Uh, that we, we go through this process, and I understand this is not my first rodeo. 
and I'm passionate about the things that I come to this mic and those things that I believe in. And I come to this mic not just standing here speaking as a Democrat, but I come here standing as a father. I come standing offering my voice because I have a living mother. I come offering my voice because I have aunties and nieces and cousins who are women, who are strong women who believe and have their own beliefs in what they believe in. And I'm from a fruit from that tree to which they believe in. And so I stand here as their voice because the people of my district elected me to come and to be a voice for them. And I come to be that voice. And while being that voice for those who cannot speak for themselves, I'm here to say to the state of Alabama that this is a bad bill. That while we're trying to do what others are, uh, other states are trying to do to race to the finish line to be the first one to say that I overturn Roe v. Wade, I say that you better be very careful about what you want to overturn. While you think that you have a president that's ready to give you Roe v. Wade and hand it to you based on the court that he's giving you, believe me that there are presidents, there are constitutional statutes that those men and women adhere to first before they adhere to political parties. And they are supposed to be apolitical as they deliberate the decisions of Roe v. Wade or anything else. So be careful about what you send to Washington, that you might get something back that you really don't want. Because while we, 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 we struggle to get rid of Obamacare, you know that once legislation and laws get in place, it's very hard and very difficult to overturn and repeal laws. If they thought they could do it, they would have already done it. If they thought they could have gotten rid of Roe Ro Wade, you've already had the majority on this court for the last eight years, and you have not been able to do Roe versus Wade. So I feel confident as I stand here this afternoon that whatever you send is going to be unconstitutional and that God Almighty will be the last judge of what he sees that is right or wrong. So with that, we're going to debate a little bit today. I intend to offer an amendment. I intend to offer that amendment that everybody's been waiting on. But I said to the pro tem that I would not offer that amendment until members was back on the floor. And I won't. And I'll be fair with that and make sure that people have the opportunity to vote on that amendment. And that amendment, as you know, will be incest and rape. And if Mr. Mr. President, if you would allow me, I know that you usually introduce people that are in the gallery, but if you would allow me, I have three rape victims that are in the gallery here today, Ms. Sam, Ms. Allison, and Haley. Would you please stand? These women uh, members are victims of rape who had to abort their child because of that. And let me just tell you, ladies, you can be seated. Let me tell you the story of Sam. <laughs> Sam was a college student right here in Montgomery, Alabama, who went to, Alabama, uh, went to AUM. She was raped by her coworker. After the rape, she found that she was pregnant. And at that time, her rapist began to stalk her. Can you imagine that? So with that, as the story that she tells me, and I paraphrase it, that she began to feel that this man was never going to stop stalking her, or if she had this baby, that she would have to live with this man trying to take possession over her and fighting for that child. So she decided the best thing for her was to do an abortion. She did not want to have to live the rest of her life looking at a child from a rape of a co-worker. That is astonishing to that lady. She'd have to live with that every day. 
probably even before that, she was probably somebody who was pro-life. But she had to go through that. And that was trauma. And she's still traumatized. She began to tell her story, so now she's just getting to the point to say she's willing to tell her story to America. She's willing to tell the nation her story. I've had countless of women in the last 72 hours since we left here who've called me with their stories. Who I was on a syndicated program last night in Washington, D.C., women calling in, telling their story about their rape and how incest. We had a 12-year-old girl right here in the state of Alabama who got, had incest and raped by her own uncle. And the Alabama Supreme Court upheld that she could have that abortion without parental consent. And that 12-year-old girl, who probably just started to having a cycle and now her uncle, she got to live with somebody in her life, somebody she probably loved and respect. And right now under this bill, the way this bill is postured right now, that little baby, and that's, that's not a woman, that 12-year-old girl is nothing but a baby. That baby would have had to carry a baby, and that baby would have had to have a baby and had to live with that for the rest of her life by her uncle. But yet and still, we got men on this side of the aisle that's willing to say to her, you got to have that child under this law. She wouldn't have been able to do it. And I, I tend to think about it. My baby is 10 years old. And it twinges me to think that if somebody were to rape my child, First of all, they will have another prison cell to kill because I'll probably be killing them. Number one, if you rape my baby. Number two, the fact that my baby would have to carry around a child that someone else invaded her space, invaded her body, and she get raped and have to have that child based on an Alabama law, just because we want to legislate morality, just because we want to be the first to the hill to say Roe v. Wade is out the door. Senator Chambliss, do you have a baby girl? Senator, this is not about my family. I'm, I'm just sorry. asking a question because I, I have, well, sorry, I apologize, Senator. Let me just say to those of you who have a baby girl, just close your eyes for a moment and think about, because it's possible that it could happen. It is very possible that it could happen to your child. And there are many families that are out there that is happening to, that does not have the means, does not have the will, does not have the financial fortitude to be able to ship their child away somewhere because of the embarrassment that it might bring to their family and get an abortion and bring them back into town as if nothing ever happened. It happens every day, Senator Chambliss. I apologize for calling your name. It happens every day in this state. Because part of that 60 million women that you talk about, they weren't black, all black. They weren't all Democrat. They weren't all women of color. Some of those were Republicans on your side. And they had abortions, college students, every day. What about the morning out the pill? Are we going to ban it? This bill, you know, this bill where you're trying to go, you didn't put a lot in this bill because it doesn't deal with a lot of the unintended consequences. I know you didn't intend, and I know you, your heart. I believe I know you, your heart, was not the intent of this bill to see a 12-year-old little girl have to carry a baby 
herself. A baby having a baby. That's not your intent, to be raped and have to carry. I know your heart is not like that. That's not your heart. See, while you're trying to raise to the heel to ban Roe v. Wade, the unintended consequences that could happen in this state will rest on the shoulder of those who vote for this bill. That's not your intent. I know it's not your intent. I know it's not the intent of Representative Collins. I know it wasn't her intent. But these are the things that I think that people don't think through when we draw up legislation sometimes. It sounded good. It sounded okay. It sounded right to you because that's what we're trying to get to. But is it right? Is it right for a baby to have to carry a baby after being raped, after incest, after that uncle took that little child, after that uncle who she probably loved, who she probably cared for, that uncle took her, he took a lot away from her. You see, we men, we always don't have that feeling because we're external. We have to go inside of a woman. We into, the women are more internal. They feel more than we do. They're more of a passion. They're more of something that they have than we would ever know because God gave them that. We'll never know. I know I never know. That's why I stand here because I'm not trying to make those choices for them. For me, I choose life. But for a woman to have her own choice, I respect that. I respect that between she, her doctor. And then we're going to criminalize the doctor for coming to be able to come to a rescue. I know you have the little provision in there to deal with emergencies. But the emergency may be a 12-year-old. The emergency may be somebody who just financially cannot deal with it or emotionally can deal with it. The emergency doesn't always have to be the breach for the baby can't come out or turn sideways and they have to abort the baby. Y'all didn't think this all the way through, gentlemen. You didn't think it all the way through. You couldn't have thought it all the way through. Because if you're going to allow a baby to be raped or a uncle or a father or a cousin to be able to have babies by their own family, you couldn't have been thinking this all the way through. And I know that you're a rational man because you're an engineer. Y'all, you are, you are, you are thought-provoking people. Engineers think things through. You are thinkers. You think of measurements and buildings and how you're going to build it and to the exact point. You couldn't have thought this through because you know what? You just decided to handle this up here for them because you weren't at the table when they drew this up. Not Clyde. You weren't at the table. But you're willing to carry it through. And you're standing in the gap for it. But at the end of the day, that wasn't your heart. Couldn't have been. Not the, Clyde, not, not the gentleman that I know on the other side. Not the gentleman, not, not even with a bill that you bought with, 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 with the senator for Mobile. The bill y'all just had. We just had it today about incest. And then you want incest to happen here. Obviously, it's in the bill because it, it's not protected. You got to want it. You got to want it because you didn't protect them in your bill from incest nor rape, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And that is the problem that I have with this bill, that you're, you're leaving all the unintended consequences on the table. You want them to happen. Haley, Sam, and Allison, they didn't ask for what they got. They didn't ask their, their, that predator to 
to, 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 to pray it on them. They didn't ask for that. It happened. And now they're having to live with it. There are people, there are women who have committed suicide at the rape because they couldn't take it. There are women who are out here who are all emotionally distressed at the rape because they can't take it. It happens. And especially when it happens with a family member. This is the problem that I have with this bill. I have all kinds of problems with this bill. But this is the biggest one. When you all took this amendment out just the other night. With that, it probably could have moved on. But you know that if it had this amendment on, it doesn't look good in Washington with that amendment. The Supreme Court doesn't want to deal with it if it had those exceptions because Roe versus Wade can already deal with some of those exceptions. It don't... You, you, it, it don't get you where you want to go. It don't get you up the hill of Washington. So you got to have it clean to get to Washington. And you want to be the first to get there. And that is a sad case because we need health care in this state. What we should be talking about is chips. Right now we're standing here and neither one of our budget have chips in there the way we can care for it. We even deal with Places where we have 14 rural hospitals that has closed down in the last two years. Where women are having to drive 50 and 75 miles just to have a baby. For those who even want to have a baby. There are low birth weight babies when you have infant mortality rate because there are no clinics around in some of the areas in my district. These are women who still might even want to have their child but end up having to have a child that is low birth weight, or they even the child may even die. How do we deal with miscarriages in this? How do we deal with that? How do we how do we propose that if if now, you know one lady wrote to me in in a in in, 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 a, in a in an email, says Senator Singleton, ask them this question for me, and I will pose this question. If in fact at the point of time, as you say, that knowing that a person knows that they're pregnant is life. And the woman asks me, can she start getting child support at that time? It's life? Yes. I, indulge me into that one. Can she receive child support since you want to start life right here and say it's life? Can she not receive child support? Currently, our law does not allow that. Currently. If, if, um, if Roe versus Wade is overturned, then maybe we need to look at that. Okay. Now, the other side to that was I had another question was, and I disagree with what you just said, and I'm going to come back to it. But if, in fact, from the time that I have life, can I ensure that child in my body? And if I have a miscarriage, can I collect insurance on that child? My guess is... There's no law against that. No, my, my guess is there's somebody, uh, you know, if, if there's an insurance company out there that give insurance to a stock car racer, then I'm sure there'd be an insurance. Well, would you be willing to that. vote on an amendment to say that? I'd be willing to vote on it. With me on it? No, sir. So why don't you want to give a woman a child? You see, see, that's my problem is you don't want to give the child a chance, but you want somebody to carry it through all of these different circumstances. But if a family wants to be able to insure the fetus, and if it's life and they miscarriage, why don't you want the insurance company? You don't want big businesses to have to to pay out any money for that. It's life, as well, you say. I, I just stated that I thought that there would be insurance companies that would do that. No, I mean, but but I don't know of anything like that out there. I think that insurance companies will fight it because there's nothing in their rules to say when it is. Because they, they want to say life is when it is born, when it comes out of the womb. Then you can insure it. But if we set the standard right here, 
claim it when life begins, then we should be able to insure it when life begins. I know of no law that you can't do that right now. Uh, what insurance company you know that would do it? Do you know anybody you know, that I, I have really, I really hadn't compared rates on that one. Do, <laughs> do you know anybody that have that kind of insurance? I, I, I've not compared rates on that lately. I don't. Yeah, know yeah, yeah. I'm sure you haven't. I, 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 I'm sure there is. I'm sure there is. B but before I bring my, I'm talking on this because there's some members are out before I bring my amendment. Okay. And, and, I, and I, as again, I promised those members that I would not bring it until everybody were present to vote. So we, we, we want them all on the road. Sure, sure. So if we are dealing with this, why don't we allow these women to be able to choose for themselves. This is a bad bill. This is just a bad bill all around. It's a bad precedence to sit in the state of Alabama. Because if Roe versus Wade is overturned, then this become the law for the state. Because then there is no other national law until something is replaced with it. Then what we're going to end up with is a 50 states that's going to have different laws in all 50 states. And that was one of the reasons for Roe. It's because all of these states were having their own laws, and the Supreme Court decided to have one law. That would be the supreme law of the land. So now I understand under the 10th Amendment, everybody wants to say states ought to be able to do what states ought to want to do. But this state can't say that because we so dependent upon the federal government you let the federal government pull a rug from under us, the state of Alabama will probably float off into the Gulf somewhere. We can't stand on our own. We can't even find chips on our own because the feds won't give us a little money now. There's a lot we can't afford on our own without the federal government matching DHR, or matching Medicaid. We can't even afford it. But we want to shine at what goes on at the federal level. I apologize. That's okay, son. No problem. Um, I, I promised my mother that I wouldn't get too emotional up here today. And, and I'm going to hold that promise to her. Because really this hit me in the gut. This is one of those bills that just hits you in the gut. And it just tears me up. And I know maybe you don't understand as a man while I stand over on this side. Maybe you don't. I don't stand here because of the news cameras are here. I don't relish in that. I don't care. But I stand here again for those voiceless women to whom we are trying to legislate what they can do with their body. Just like the senator from Mobile said, there's not one law that we know of that regulates a man's body. We get away with so much. We get away with it. And, and it's sad. And it's sad that the fact that a, a doctor would get more time in prison, a doctor for performing abortion under this law, a doctor will get more time in prison than the man who raped Sam. The doctor will spend 90, up to 99 years in prison, but a man who raped Sam will only get up to 10 years in prison. 
The man who raped Allison and the man who raped Haley will get out and he can come back and stalk them again and rape them again if they go to prison. But a doctor who does an abortion in this state under this law will probably never see life again outside of the jail cell. Something is imbalanced. Something is wrong with that. Go with that one. Okay, gotcha. Something is wrong with that. It, it, it is sad. Had you, did you think about that? That the man who did the incest, the uncle, the uncle who incest his 12-year-old niece would get way less time than the doctor. Not only the one who performed it, but he would get less time than the one who attempts it. I don't know what an attempted abortion is. Maybe y'all didn't even define what an attempted abortion is. What is an attempted abortion? Was that defined in the bill? I didn't see, an, I didn't see a definition for attempt. Did I overlook something there? No, the, the um, common dictionary language of attempt would be what applies. You attempt it. But my question is, what, how do you attempt an abortion? I, I'm not a physician, so I don't know exactly well, I mean, how but you got to you got to be you got to be knowledgeable on this carrying this. You got to know Bobby Singer going to ask that question. <laughs> Maybe you need to call somebody, Alec or whoever y'all carrying these bills for. I haven't talked and to And ask Alec. their lawyers. Or call one of the pro-life lawyers and ask them, what is an attempt at abortion? Because how do, you, how do you measure that? How do you measure an attempted abortion? We understand an abortion. But how do you attempt? So how do, you, how do you justify putting somebody in jail for 10 years to life, up to 10 years, for an attempt with a Class C felony? That means they can lose their license forever to practice medicine. What is an attempt? An attempt is you go through the normal procedure and the baby survives. That's an attempted abortion. Look like you ought to be glad that it comes out and the baby survives. I, I would be because that life will be preserved. <laughs> life is precious. <clears throat> but you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna put someone in jail for an attempt. That is wrong, Senator. That is wrong on every level. So if I attempted to murder you and I shot you and I hit right through your chest, but not through your heart, that, no harm, no foul. No, uh, that, um, but, but at least we know you shot a gun. Yeah, we would know that, that the abortion was t attempted. I don't understand the attempting of an abortion, because either you do it or you don't. So you're saying either you murder or you don't. Uh, no, no, uh, you, can, you can shoot somebody and you intent to kill them, but you just didn't do it. That's right. So I don't know how you go in. See, I don't understand. I don't know how you go in to do an abortion and you attempt it and you don't. You scared somebody came running behind you. You had to run off before they got there. Maybe that was an attempt. Man, I could see an attempt there that you was trying to do it. You was in the back alley. You was trying to do it. Then somebody came. You had to, woo, you had to run. You're smarter than I am. And you, you attempted to do it. I don't know a legal definition for attempted abortion. Maybe, 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 your, maybe those smart lawyers on your side should have tried to make, put some definitions in here. I know they was afraid of putting definitions in because you know what? Because they knew the definitions would be challenged. That's why they didn't do it. So you just use this arbitrary language. But you're going to put somebody in prison on an attempt. And how do you prove an attempt? Abortion. That the young lady went there to get an abortion but the doctor said, I will do it, and then she changed her mind, and because the doctor had knowledge and said he would do it, that's an attempt to do it. Does he have to sit up with all his tools and everything, get the tools ready, and get ready to do the abortion, and then he get there, sterilize all his or her tools, and then once he get there, and then the, girl, the young lady say, 
I decided I don't want to do it anymore, then that's a temp because he got the tools ready. I'm just trying to understand. I, do, I want to be able to go back and tell my little niece or my, my cousins and when they ask me, Uncle Bobby, what is an attempted abortion? I want to be able to tell them that I was standing up with the learned gentleman who brought the bill and he told me it was X, Y, Z. And, and I've already answered. It's when you go through the process of an abortion, but the baby survives. That's an attempted abortion. But the baby survives and that's attempted abortion. And that would, that, okay. When you go through the process of an abortion and the baby survives, that's an attempt. Okay. I guess that's a better definition than any because you don't have one here. So whatever your definition is, that's what it would be. Okay. I'm just trying to, in my little old mind, you know, you know, I talk to myself sometimes. Sometimes I say self. <laughs> self, uh, some of this stuff just don't sound right to you, you know? And I have to, I have to talk to me because sometimes I don't make sense to other folk. And I was like, Bobby, what is an attempted abortion? And I just said, self, help me out. Because, you know, I'm... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a little slow around here. I've, oh, I've, on, I've only been here come about on, 17 on. years. I'm a little slow around here. Come on, Senator. I'm a little slow. So y'all gonna have to help me out. I'm a little country boy from Greenboro, Alabama. Yeah, yeah. We so poor we can't afford the other OR. That's where I'm from. Mm. So we don't know nothing about this stuff, like this big city stuff. You're talking big city stuff to me now. I need you to help a little country boy understand what is an attempted abortion versus an abortion? Because you have it in this bill, and you're going to give somebody a Class C felony for making an attempt. I don't understand it. And I don't know how members on that side is willing to vote for something that they really don't understand what definitions that it is. I would think that lawyers on that side would be over here asking the same question. Maybe they ask you the question in privacy. Maybe they don't want to come up here and ask the question because they're on your side. But here I am, I'm going to ask the question for them. And maybe it can help clarify something in this body as to how we define abortion and attempted abortion. I know I keep harboring on it because I want to understand it. It just behooves me that we can take terminology and put it into a bill that will become law with no definitions. 99% of all the law we make, we usually have definitions in it. This bill has no definition. And what does it mean? There's nothing for the court to go on to say whether or not you were right or wrong. Now you are leaving it up to court to define what is an attempt. I bet you and guarantee you I guarantee you that the first justice that get this will ask the same question. He will ask to the, the litigant over there, say, would you define what an attempted abortion is for me? I can see a judge asking that lawyer that question. And I guess he would say, well, what was the legislative intent? And they always sometimes go back to what the legislative intent is. And what our intent is usually be in the footnotes. And if they can't define what it is and what the legislative intent is, how are they going to be able to define it? I can see them just wiping that part out because can't nobody define it. It's unconstitutional, number one. This whole bill is unconstitutional. My learned constitutional lawyer has stood up here and told y'all exactly how unconstitutional it is. Now, Senator Smitherman uh, said he had one more amendment that he wanted to bring, and I'm going to let him bring his amendment, then I'm going to come back. I think the body is coming back in, and then I'll bring my amendment, okay? Thank you, Senator. And then we'll get ready to roll. I'm not going to keep these people up here all night long because we know that y'all probably have the vote to do what you're going to do. I just want to make sure 
and we're going to try to get it back on because I think that this is the only thing that the amendment that I'm going to bring is the only thing that's going to make this bill at least somewhat sensible that we at least can wrestle and sleep at night. Other than that, this is going to be a hard, hard pill to swallow. I just don't understand where y'all are coming from with this. Somebody didn't think this through. You didn't use that engineering mind on this bill, so therefore I know you didn't. See, I've seen bills that you wrote, Senator. I've seen bills that you've been crafted behind because they don't leave out very many details. It's very seldom that when you bring a bill that someone can have an amendment that they want to put on, that makes sense. If the one that Senator Figures put on, you will agreement to that in your other bill because it made sense. You might have missed that little thought process, but you didn't think about this bill here. You didn't put no thought process in this bill. There was no real thought process in this bill. This was just a bill just to get to the Supreme Court any way that we can. And because we have the numbers, because we have the supermajority, we'll just run over the other side and we can get there. We don't need to make sense. It don't need to make sense to anybody. I know that's not you, Senator. It had to be somebody else from down at the lower floor. And the, and the people who put this bill together for y'all. I don't even think she wrote the bill. I think it came from one of those high polluted organization called Alec that keep y'all wide open about all the red meat issues that you should be. This is what you should be doing. This is what gonna get you reelected. This is what need to be doing in a red state versus a blue state. And y'all buy into that. Not thinking about your constituency base. Not thinking about what you are putting on your people. Not thinking about the little children, the little 12 year old girl who got a care of baby in her belly for nine months. Under this bill, a woman who had been raped got to carry a baby in her belly who had to look, and God forbid if the little boy, big head joker, come out looking like him, she got to look in his face for the rest of her life. And I'm sure just because she's a mother, she would go on, if she had to have him, she would find a way to love him because that's where God built them to be able to love. But if she had her choice, she may do something different. And don't take away their choice to be able to say what they need to do with their bodies. Because I know that's not you. You're a different person than this bill. Because I believe in you. Thank you. I don't believe in this bill. you my friend. This bill is not my friend. Thank you, Senator. You're my friend as well, and we just have a difference of opinion. And I hope our opinion is, is not just about going to the Supreme Court. Maybe I hope that's what it is. I hope this is not something that you inherently in your spirit believe in. I just don't feel that in you. I don't feel that in the, in the representative. I think this was just that red meat bill that we're going to be the first one to get to the Supreme Court. We're going to race to the Supreme Court. Georgia, you know what one of the representatives of Georgia said? Had you heard the quote that she put out there? Which one was that? She said to the governor of the state of Georgia, don't sign the bill. Let Alabama go through it and pay all the legal fees getting there first. Let Alabama pay for us. We don't need to expend money on this. Let Alabama do it. And she was a Republican. Everybody just want to dump on Alabama. Let them be the first. Let them spend all that money because the money that we're going to spend in litigation, we could be saving some baby lives from infant mortality. We could be saving some baby lives who are low, low rate babies. We could be saving baby lives who are out there hungry, that go to bed hungry every night. We could see the thing about it, you all that I don't understand is when these babies get here, you don't care nothing else about them. You don't care whether they eat, you want to cut food stamps, you want to cut welfare, you want to make people do all these things just to loop to get a little money, you want to cut the WIC program, you want to cut everything that it takes to keep a baby healthy. That's the problem. You should care for them from the cradle to the grave. 
from the womb to the grave. But we don't. We don't. We don't even want to care for our elderly. We want to put them out of nursing home. They can stay there only for a while. If it left up, you know, but let this be big business. Y'all will go to the bat for big business. You'll give them all incentives they need. You will give them every incentive they need to come to this state to do whatever they want to do. But you don't want to do nothing for families in this state. Nothing for families who, who are the, the bread and butter of this state. You don't want to do anything for them. Let big business ask for something. You'll be in here tomorrow ready to pass a, bid, a bill for big business. Let them ask for an incentive for Mercedes tomorrow. See, won't you give Mercedes another incentive? Just because they need an incentive to build another 2,000 jobs, you'd be glad to do that. And then they turn around and make everybody a temp worker, pimping our people. But little babies go hungry. You don't want to do anything for them. Tell mothers that they ought to go to work and do certain things when they're trying to take care of their child. Y'all don't care nothing about children for real. You don't. I see too many bills come through here where you really don't care nothing about children for real. This is just a political issue for you. This is not a heartfelt, sincere issue for you. You don't care about babies for real. If you cared about babies for real, Let's pass some bills. That, that, let's pass some bills to help rural health care. Let's pass some bills to help these rural hospitals. OBGYNs have been closing down in rural Alabama. I asked this governor to let's start talking about rural health care. We had one conversation about it. They had another one about it at all. How you think jobs want to come in and we don't have health care? We talking about we want to retain talent in this state. We're running talent away. People don't want to come in with all these arcade laws that Alabama's about to put on them. All for political show. All for political show. Mr. President, I'm going to yield to the gentleman from Jefferson and allow him to bring an amendment. And with that amendment, I'll come back with my amendment. All right. Thank, Thank you, Senator you. Singleton. Senator Smithman. Thank you, Mr. President. Just wanted to set the president straight that this precedent straight that this is first amendment that I've offered. You know, I didn't want you to think some other reason that I had, didn't take the opportunity at the first to offer my amendment. Okay, but I this amendment uh, I'm going to uh, offer it, and uh, I'll Secretary Reid and receive the amendment. Amendment to House Bill 314 by Senator Smitherman. On page 5, after line 8, insert a new subsection J and re-letter the remaining subsection accordingly. J, it is estimated that at least 1.5 million people were killed in this country as a result of the slave trade and slavery. Senator Smitherman. The, the amendment speaks for itself. If we're going to list all these other sections of people in consideration in that section, and if I, if for the people that don't know, I don't mind reading it, but I think if if the people know, we've we've talked about it in this section about the many people who were murdered during the Rwanda genocide, which was a hundred thousand. We talked about the uh, uh, people that was uh, uh, killed by Stalin and and in the Germany death camps. Surely we're gonna give consideration to another segment of our people, which is our African Americans, who were forced over here and killed, you know, over here at coming and why they're not here. So I think it's just like we said about any of the religious thing that, yes, we wanted them to be able to, to serve or uh, have religious services, but everybody else who need to uh, express their religious concerns would have that option. That's what I'm doing at this time. So if you, would you like to have anything to say about it? Uh, sure, Mike. Okay. I'd like to uh, offer the amendment and call right. for the roll. Secretary, call the roll. Uh, roll. Mr. Albritton. Vote no. Mr. Allen. Uh, no, no. Mr. Barfoot. You gonna vote no against African Americans? Mr. Beasley. Get an opportunity to be recognized. You working out there, everybody but us. Mr. Burkett. That's what you're doing. Mr. Butler. Mr. Chambliss. Aye. Mr. Chastain. No. No. Mr. Coleman Madison. 
Ms. Dunn. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Ted, show me. Mr. Holly. You show me. Mr. Jones. Show me. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh. Mr. McClendon. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Ms. Sanders Fortier. Mr. Schofield. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Shelnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Aye. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Mr. Ward. Mr. Watley. Mr. Williams. Uh, six eyes, 24 nays. Uh, Senator Smith amendment fails. Mr. President. Yes, Senator Chambliss. Mr. President, I'm, I'm sorry. I was a little bit slow. You're fast up there. The reason I um, requested the body to vote no is that this is already addressed in another section. Can you, in another section? Right. Yes, Can you please read this section to us in page and lines where it's addressed? It starts at the bottom of page 3, line 24. You want me to read it? Or I, don't, I mean, I asked you to, but if I, you, I can read it's it. line 24. Uh, In the United States Declaration of Independence, the principle of natural law that all men are created equal was articulated. The self-evident truth found in natural law that all human beings are equal from creation was at least one of these bases for the anti-slavery movement, the women's suffrage movement, the Nuremberg war crimes trials, and the American civil rights movement. If those movements have not been able to appeal to the truth of universal human equality, they could not have been successful. Well, if that's the case, why did we have to list in Section I all those particular groups and, and state the number of people who were affected, but you want to exclude African Americans? I mean, if that's the case, then I want to get an amendment and eliminate that whole section. If you're telling me that section right there uh, trumps the necessity to have this, I'll accept that provided you would tell me that we're going to strike that whole section talking about everybody else in there. Now, that's only foul. I'll do what you want with this, but take everybody else out. Because, see, that ain't equal protection. You want to stick, I mean, not you personally, but you want to stick out all them and have that section, but you don't want us in there. That's what it's saying. It ain't saying nothing else but that. I don't disagree with what you said. I'll accept what you said about that section. But let's take that rest out in I. Because if you don't, then you're leaving us out in I. If it's not necessary because of that section, I is not necessary. So if you think different, tell me why I is necessary, but we are to be excluded out of I. It's my opinion that it's been addressed. Senator. No, it hasn't been addressed the same way it is in Idaho. That ain't an opinion. Here the facts. Here the, case, here, the, here the bill right here. I'm not stating my opinion. Do I need to read? I'll read what I said so they'll know. They heard what you said there. I'll read what I said. In addition to uh, what you just said, I just page four. Let me find four. I'm going to start with four. Is this it right here? Yeah, page four. And I, it says, it is estimated that six million Jew, Jewish people were murdered in Germany, concentration camps during World War II. It says that three million people were executed by Joseph Stalin's reign in, Soviet, in the Soviet. It says 2.5 million people were murdered during the Chinese Great Leap Forward in 1958. It says 1.5 to 3 million people were murdered by uh, 
in Cambodia. It says in 1970, it said approximately one million people were murdered during the Rwanda genocide in 1994. And it says that all of these were widely acknowledged to have been crimes against humanity. Even put in here by comparison, more than 50 million babies have been aborted in the United States since Roe decision in 93. More than three times the normal were killed in German death camps, Chinese, Kurds, Stalins, whatever that is, and the Cambodia killing. And you telling me we don't belong in there? We the only people left out. That's what this amendment was do, uh, uh, choosing to do, put us in there where you don't put everybody else. And you still said, I want to ask you, I'm asking you a question. You still said we ain't got a right to be in there, or shouldn't be in there? Is that what you're saying? No, sir, I, I didn't say that. No, I'm asking you, is that is that what you're saying? No, sir. Okay, well, why would you be against us being in there then? You are in there. No, I'm talking about the same manner as them. The same manner. I feel it's covered, Senator. How is it covered when it's not in there? I mean, that covers the same people that you put in I, but you don't want to put us in I. Uh, I, I feel it's covered, Senator. How is it covered in I, then? And it's an unfortunate part uh, no, of our history, yes, sir. No, I'm talking in I. How is it covered in I? Please tell me that. Tell me how what my amendment is covered in the section I. You said you feel it is, so I'm just asking you, how is it covered in I? I'm saying it's covered in D. I got D, yes, sir. Okay, but I, but I'm but it, we're not covered in I, are we? No, sir, it's covered in D. Okay, but all the other people I just called, they are in I. I did read that accurate, didn't I? I'm sure you did. Okay. All right, so you, you still think that we shouldn't be covered in I? I'm saying you're covered in D. No, I'm not talking about D no more. My conversation is I. <laughs> My question is that would you support us in I? Not because D will cover it, but just like everybody else, give us same equal assets you gave people in I. Senator, it's your mic. No, I'm asking you a question. I mean, you we no, haven't dialogued. I've asked I'm, I'm having, I'm, I'm, uh, you had not asked my question about I. You went back to D. I didn't say a word about D. And I'm, I mean, I'm still trying to get a response about I. That's what my question is. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to do anything else but get a response about I. That's all I'm doing. Senator, I is not better than D, not worse than D. It's covered. No, uh, the section I does not cover. Would you would you disagree with me? Is covered. Would you disagree with me in section I will not mention? Is that right? In section I will not mention. In the bill you were mentioning. I didn't say the bill. Now come on, Senator. Come on, don't dodge, man. Whether don't dodge. I'm just asking you a there, question. Whether I, it's here or there, it's addressed. Yeah, all right, no, it's not it's addressed. It's unfortunate that we even have to have the I address. know, but it's not addressed in there. Now either it is or it isn't. It's addressed. In I? In D. Okay. Well, why, why can't, why wouldn't you support us being that I then? Because it's already in D. Okay, why wouldn't you support me getting amendments striking everybody in I because they in D? Well, if I accept like what you said, which I will, but we want to be treated the same, so just, uh, let's eliminate I. Everybody's covered in D. And I don't have no problem with that neither. Senator, it's your mic. No, it ain't my mic. It's your votes out there because it's obvious whatever you say they're going to do. So I, I don't need to talk to them no more. I got to talk to you. Because you turned around and told them vote no, and they voted no, and that's fine. So what well, I'm going to be talking to them for, because once I talk to them, they're going to turn to look to you to see what you're going to do this or do that. So I don't even need to look out there no more or with this bill no more. My attention needs to look straight at you. So that's why I'm talking to you. That's why I'm asking you these questions. Would you object to that section being eliminated so we will be treated the same? Yes, sir. You don't want us to be treated the same. I did not say that. Well, you said, I'm asking you, would you? And you said no. That's what you said? No. I mean, everybody in here, I ain't putting no words. They ain't making nothing up. The journal, if they keep the word reflected. That's what you said. So what, when, why can't we be included in the statement? 
Because my position we don't, it, remains the same. You're already addressed. And no, addressed. I'm talking about NI, though. We're, why can't we be an eye? We don't want to. We don't want to face that. What happened? We want to ignore it. Is that it? Uh, it? Is it something? Is it something else I don't know that I need to be told? Is it anything like that? No, sir. I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. Senator, what's Senator? Is he in here? Is Senator Singleton? Senator Singleton? Come on. Because, see, I'm, I'm getting ready to start an hour in a minute or two. And then I'm going to close you. So I, and I don't, want to, I don't want you to not be able to do what you want to do. All right. Senator Singleton, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I think you took my amendment with you. <laughs> It's okay. Yes, sir. This is it. This is, yeah, this is it. Uh, Mr. President, would you ring the bell? I'm going to offer my amendment without a lot of fanfare. Secretary Reed, receive the amendment. Amendment to House Bill 314 by Senator Singleton. On page 8, line 10, after mother, insert the following, or that rape or incest occurred. On page 8, line 18, after 2, insert the following, rape or incest or. On page 8, line 19, delete this act and insert in lieu there of the following Alabama law. Mr. President, Mr. President. Senator, Senator Singleton. Yes, Mr. President. This is, just goes back to the amendment that we uh, had on just the other night, and I think it's germane and it fits the bill. We good. Uh, I would allow the gentleman to, to speak. All right, Senator Chambliss. Mr. President, I'd just like to speak to the motion, and I would ask the membership to vote no. All right. And Secretary, call Mr. the roll. Mr. President, I would like to Mr. Put the to vote yes. Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley, Mr. Burkett, Mr. Butler, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chastain, Ms. Coleman Madison, Ms. Dunn, Mr. Elliott, Ms. Figures, Mr. Gavan, Mr. Gudger, Mr. Holly, Mr. Jones, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Marsh, Mr. McClendon, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts. Sanders Fortier, Aye. Mr. Schofield, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shelnut, Mr. Singleton, Aye. Mr. Smitherman, Aye. Mr. Stutz, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Ward, Mr. Watley, Mr. Williams. Eleven eyes, uh, twenty-one nays. The uh, Senator Single Amendment fails. Senator Singleton. Mr. President, I'd like to start my first aisle. Thank you. Well, we put on the big amendment, and I appreciate those people who decided to vote with us on that. I thought this is something that would make this bill a little bit more palatable before it got to the Supreme Court, but obviously they didn't want it. Was trying to deal with this in a civil manner, but. I just can't stand here and just let this bill go out like that. So I'm going to start my first hour and, and maybe some other colleagues, they could join Senator me. Senator Singleton, they want to. just wanted to make sure you knew this is your second hour. My second hour? I, I'll, I'll, take sure. I'll take it. I'll take it. Absolutely. You got it. So Thank you, sure sir. I'll take it. I don't want no more than an hour anyway. 
And so with that, um, this is just a bad bill that's going to go out here. And um, uh, I appreciate you, uh, Senator, for, for working through this process. And we were all able to get, get our amendments heard today. And um, unfortunately, I thought that there were, I think some people got worked on over the weekend because there were some people who, who uh, admitted just last week that they were with the amendment. So I appreciate those persons who stuck with it and didn't let people sway you over the weekend to go against an amendment. And um, I'm certain that some of your wives and nieces and aunties and cousins will be looking you in your faces when you go back home about the bill that you just just kill the state of Alabama with. I think a bill like this have a, a profound effect on business in the state of Alabama. With companies like Google and Apple and other companies who come from other places that come into our state that we so rarely depend on for employment. You know, when we had the Confederate flag hanging at the Confederate Memorial, when, when Google said they didn't like that, Governor Bentley immediately took it down because it was the right thing to do. Uh, you know, we look at a lot of things that we have in this state that seem to be going backwards, but yet and still we say we want people to come into our state. We want talent to come into our state. We want to bring more folks into our state. But then doctors under this law would decide not to come. And I, I've heard from many of doctors who said that, you know, if this is going to be the law, Senator Singleton, maybe I need to pack up my practice and get out of the state of Alabama and go somewhere where I don't have to fear that if I attempt to do something, when we don't know what the definition of attempt is, and then I'm tried and put in jail for the next 10 years or so, or a doctor who performs an abortion on someone who wants that abortion and they try to deal with that situation and that doctor have to spend 99 years or to life in prison just for performing an act of upholding to this Hippocratic oath to make sure that someone doesn't lose their life, whether or not you call it an emergency situation or not. So these doctors may jump up and leave the state of Alabama because they don't know what Alabama may do to them. You know, when we practice in a backward state like this, you will not get talent to come into our state. And I would say to people, if you want to come when rural doctors don't want to stay in rural areas, we can't have them come and recruit to come to rural areas because they're not going to want to come under these arcade laws. So that's going to be the problem that you're going to have here in the state. And I say thank you for those on the other side who stood with us and said on principle that you will stand with it to make sure that women and children who have been raped like Sam and Haley and, 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 and Allison who have been raped and had to face their rape victim who stalked them, you decided to go with with and go with the vote. Thank you very much for standing up for those those children. For the little girl who was 12 years old, you just told her and kicked her in the stomach while she was pregnant because you don't care nothing about babies having babies in this state, being raped and incest. You don't care anything about mothers with children with low birth weight. You don't care anything about babies for real. You just kicked them in the stomach and you aborted them yourself. You just aborted the state of Alabama with your rhetoric with this bill. You just aborted the state of Alabama yourself, and all of you should be put in jail for this abortion that you just laid on the state of Alabama. This is just a shame. This is a disgrace, and it's a travesty. Don't come to me talking about giving big business some more incentive just to come to the state of Alabama to do business in the state of Alabama, where you don't care nothing about the citizens of the state of Alabama, where you don't care nothing about mothers of the state of Alabama, where you don't care nothing about whether or not men take advantage of women and rape them and take something out of them and you still want them to have a child of that that bad act that's on them and you still want them to have a child you just aborted the state of Alabama you just raped Alabama with this bill that you're about to send out here and the governor when you
you sign it, you just rape the state of Alabama yourself. And why is it that this bill is so important? Why has it got to be signed six months after the governor signed it? Why can't it go immediately when the governor signed it? If you believe in it so, so readily that you believe in it, that you got to give it six months to go into effect. Why can't you go on and get it right now? Why don't you put a, put a, a bill, an a amendment on it to make it start immediately? That's a cowardly act because you don't know what to do with it. You just abort it and you rape the state of Alabama. You just rape every little baby. You just rape every little girl. You just rape every woman who who been raped by a man. You just raped her all over again. Yes, I said it. And I hope your conscience is eating your head up. I hope it's eating you bad because I'm going to be on your conscience for every day from this point on about the fact that you just took Alabama and you just rubbed her through the gutters and you just ran her down the the sewage because Alabama didn't need this. We already being looked at as a backward state and you just gave her an abortion. You just aborted the state. She was pregnant with this bad bill, and you just aborted her. Live with it, gentlemen. Go home to your wives. Go home to your sisters and your nieces and your cousins, and look them in the eyes and tell them that you did something right for them. You can't look at them and tell them that. You are not going to be able to look at them. Go back and look at in your offices. And go back and look at all your friends. You're not going to be able to tell them that, that you did the right thing. You might say, I think I did what was morally right. But you're not going to be able to sleep with this on your conscience because you're wrong. But you're going to come back in here tomorrow wanting me to help you pass a bill to give somebody some incentives to come in and continue to rape folks by giving them temporary jobs. You're going to come in here tomorrow asking me to help you with other bills. That means nothing. But we don't want to protect our babies in this state. We don't want to protect the children of this state. We don't want to protect the women of our state. We just said to women and all the women in here, I hope y'all go back and organize. I hope you go back and organize strong. And I hope you get rid of all these men who just violated you, who just raped you, who just aborted you. I hope you go back and organize against them because they think they did what was right by their constituency and they just overlooked those of you who believe in what we're standing here strongly for. I hope you go back and you do them right. I hope you go back and they feel your wrath at the poll when it's time to vote again. I hope they feel your wrath at the poll. I hope you don't forget them when it comes to this time. Because they need to feel your wrath. They need to feel it. They need to feel the fact that they just aborted you all over again. They just took the baby and rang it up inside of you and just kicked you in your stomach. Women in this state didn't deserve this. This is all about political grandstanding. That is all this is about, political grandstanding. They didn't need this. State of Alabama ought to be ashamed of herself. You ought to be ashamed. Go look in the mirror. You ought to be ashamed. You ought to be ashamed. Just kick babies in the stomach then. And I'm so tired of standing up here trying to deal with y'all. I know you got the super majority, but you're going to hear from us every time. This is going to be a slow, slow section from this point on. This is going to be a slow section because the women of the state of Alabama deserve a voice. They deserve to be able to be heard. There is not one woman on that side. I applaud the men on that side who stood up for right. I applaud you men who stood up for women right, for the right thing to do. And I know when it's time to have the final passage, you're going to vote this bill out. But it's going to take six months before it goes into effect. If you really believe in it, let's get an amendment to make it go into effect immediately. Let's go immediately. Can we get an amendment to have this bill in effect immediately instead of six months after the passage? Up on the governor's signature. Let's do it up on the governor's signature. Let's not wait. What are we waiting for? 
since y'all want it so bad, let it go on. Put it on out there. Tell doctors that they, they are now under siege. And if doctors start walking out of the state and we started getting bad medical care and health care, we can't recruit any more industry because you don't have great health care and doctors to come, don't blame nobody but yourselves. And I'm going to be standing over here and saying, I told you so. Passing something that's totally unconstitutional. And y'all don't care. And, and, and the thing about it is that you're supposed to be physical conservatives. But you're willing, to, you're willing to waste money on legal fees on some junk like this that's just going to go to the Supreme Court. All you physical conservatives who don't want to spend a dime on children in the budget. CHIPS is not even funded. You don't even want to find $35 million to fund CHIPS. But you're willing to spend this money on legal fees. Because the Attorney General don't want to fight this. He's going to go out and hire people to come in and fight this for us. And they're going to be charging $3,000 an hour to go to the Supreme Court. Y'all are wrong on this. I know you're standing on your own principles. You're standing on what you say your party is about, but your party is wrong on this one. This bill is a bad bill. This bill is, 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 is super bad. This is one of the worst ones I've seen. I thought, I thought immigration was bad. This is a super bad bill here. I guess the super majority only passed super bad bills. That's why they're the super majority. They passed super bad bills. This is bad. And I hope y'all go and get your cloture petition. I hope you got it. Because if you don't have it, we'll be here all night. We don't mind talking on this side. We have the stamina. I will talk hours and hours and hours. And I'll stand here with you. I got enough reading materials, I can just start reading to you. But I like talking to you. So we're going to just not allow rape and incest be the, the standard in this test case. We're going to just not allow women's voice to be heard in this state. We're just going to continue to kick them in the guts. Kick them in the guts. They ain't nothing but women. Don't worry about it. They're just women. You can kick them in the gut. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. It's a sad day in Alabama, man. I feel like crying for real. I really do. But I'm going to hold my tears back. Because what you just said to my little girl, that it's okay for a man to rape you. And you got to have his baby if you get pregnant. You just said to my little girl, my little loving little daughter. <laughs> you just said to my daughter, you don't matter. You don't matter in the state of Alabama. That the state of Alabama don't care nothing about you, baby. I got to go home and tell her, the state of Alabama don't care nothing about you, baby. That you can just be raped, or one of your uncles or your cousin or somebody could just rape you and impregnate you, and you got to carry this baby under Alabama law. Because, baby, if you have this abortion, this doctor going to go to jail for 99 years.
That's sad, man. That, that hurts. Because I got two little girls who could be raped tomorrow. And I might not be nowhere around to protect them. You try to protect your family as much as you can. But stuff happens. I'm sure Haley and Sam and Allison father love them too. Are they uncles or somebody love them too? But they weren't there to protect them. They weren't there to protect them. Until it happened to you. Until it happened to your family. Until it happened to your family. Then you're going to be wondering what happened. You may have the financial means to take your daughter and ship her out of side of the state of Alabama so nobody would know that she had an abortion. You may be able to pay for it, but there are families who are out there that just don't have the financial means. And they will have to live with that rape and that incest. They will have to live with it. Everybody don't have the same financial means that y'all have. You got to think outside of your pocketbook and think about the whole state. This is a rural state. This is a poor state. And there are going to be some little girls who are going to get raped. There are probably somebody in this state being raped right now while we're standing here debating this. There's probably some incest that's happening somewhere in some family, some father or some uncle or some brother somewhere touching some little girl right now while we're debating this. Get her pregnant. And under this law, she got to carry that baby. She got to carry that baby, man. She can't abort it. She cannot just say, I can see my little baby looking at me and saying, Daddy, why I got to do this? I can promise you that they, they will have another cell space for Bobby Singleton because I would kill him. I'm, I'm just telling you. I don't have no reservation about saying it. Rape my baby. We just said to, you know, nine-year-old girl, 12-year-old girl here in the state of Alabama. And see, that was some of these religious right folks who had done the hallway was involved in that little girl's case. They had to testify. And they know they were wrong. And they know that they were wrong. They can't even look people in the eyes out on the hallway when you bring up that case. When I started talking about it, they probably ran out of here because they know they were wrong on that issue. They just re-raped the little girl all over again. The church did. So we're going to just continue to rape little girls and let their uncles and cousins and everybody else do what they want to do to them. And if they get pregnant, okay, yeah, they go to jail. But look at the trauma that that little girl or that woman has to go through because of the law that we're going to have here in the state of Alabama. It's a hard one, man. It's a hard one. Senator Singleton. Yes. Mr. President, may I dialogue with the senator? Yes, you're recognized. You know, Senator, I, I feel your pain. And, and, you know, as I said before, I, I don't believe in abortion, but I do think it should be a woman's choice or that young girl's family's choice, you know. But I got a message for all the women out there in Alabama. The population in this state is over 50% females. It's time you start letting your voices be heard. Let your voices be heard, not only just coming here to try to talk some sense into some of these legislators, but letting your voices be heard at the polls on election day. 
supporting candidates. And yes, we do need more women, but we need more of the right women, and we need more Democratic men, the right men. So I'm sending this message out here and to all of my brothers and sisters over this country, in fact, over this world, who have been tweeting me and emailing me, offering support, thanking me for continuing to stay in a state that is not in the 21st century, but asking me, what can we do to help? Well, I want to let you know, I'm running as chairwoman of the Alabama Democratic Woo! Party, and I intend to lead the effort to get more Democrats elected to every office on every level of government. Because if you don't see this as a reason for that, we don't need a supermajority anything. We don't have a democracy anymore in the Alabama State Legislature. We don't. It's become more of a dictatorship, and you do as I say, not perhaps as I do with this law, as we have so eloquently stated. This is going to be on poor people, on poor women, poor girls. Health care is going out the window because there will be women and girls who are going to try to self-abort. But then they don't want to expand Medicaid so that everybody would have quality health care. So my heart is in pain too, Senator Singleton. And I have a six-year-old granddaughter, and I'm like you. They can have another sale for me, too, <laughs> okay? But it's, it's the principle of the thing. And to take away that right and to decide here and there what you should decide for yourself and what they should decide for you is just totally, totally unconscionable to me. I need you. All of you out there, and I've had people who were women, men, Democrats, Republicans, independents, people from Australia, the UK, Canada, all over this country, saying they want to help us. Well, we're going to need your support. We're going to need your money to help people get elected so that we can once again have a democracy in the state of Alabama. So, Senator, we got our work cut out for us, but I know we can do it because, you know, I know women are strong. Because you know what the women did for Doug Jones when he ran for U.S. Senator. Exactly. And we're just going to have to, you know, rally the troops again. But we can do it. We have to do it. And it is for the sake of our future, for the future of our children. Yes. This is, this, and Senator, you're right on, on target with, with half of the state population being women in this state. Over half, Senator. Over half of this population. And, and, and the message that we just sent to those women is if they are nothing, yeah. they're zero. That's whether they believe in abortion or not. Right. It's just a question of their bodies and what we're trying to legislate for them, their morality and what they feel. You, you can believe in it or not, but you have to still understand that here's a group down here saying what you could do with your body. And, and, and I think that women who are on the pro-life side should be offended about this bill. Doctors. Because I'm, I'm pro-life and I'm pro-choice. But I you know what? You know, I'm pro-life from conception to 18 years of age when they become an, an adult. I'm pro-life because I don't believe in the death penalty. I'm pro-life for life, not, not to pick and choose here and there. And you're right, and they're easily pass a bill here to kill somebody tomorrow. Oh, yes. On death row. Oh, yes. That same group, that same group for life is willing to go on and pass a bill to kill somebody. And big, and with the big yellow mama, uh, well, we, we, we do injections now in the state. Yes. As they say, that, that's more humane. That's more humane, yeah. Than, their to, words. than to use big yellow, yellow mama, what they used to call it. Yes. But ladies and gentlemen of this, this great state of Alabama, you need to understand we don't need to have a supermajority of anything. We need to have more balance so that you can have deliberation, 
so that you can have debate, so that you can compromise. What does that word mean now that we're here in the Senate, Senator Singleton, compromise? When do we ever really compromise? Because they know they don't need our votes. No. We really don't matter. And you know, everybody matters. All of our constituents matter because our, we have constituents from all walks of life, from all cultures. They have different experiences that they bring with them. You have no idea what people have been through many times. So that's why it's important that we have a government that's representative of the makeup of the population where you are. But we've got work to do to turn this state around. I agree with you, Senator. It is, it is, it is a lot of work to do. Um, it is scary. It is scary that, you know, laws like this continue to come out of this state. Mm -hmm. But what I don't understand is that, you know, we keep moving and talk about how we want to bring in all of these major companies and things that we want to do, but we keep passing all these arcade laws that just keep putting them in. They don't want to gamble. They don't want to do nothing. You don't want to do nothing in this state. You know, we, we just backwards Alabama. Oh, but they will, uh, they will allow people to, to uh, vote on this, okay. this lottery bill that doesn't have all of the details in it as to what will, what will happen with it. There's no enabling legislation with that lottery bill, which is why I had to vote no. Because I think the people need to know every detail of what that lottery is going to be in the state of Alabama. And Who's going to be on the commission? Who appoints the commission? It's a book about. Oh, yeah. There's a lot in there that people don't know. Because people in the street just say they want a lottery. But, right, but they don't understand. They don't as, understand what's in that book right. about. You know? Absolutely right. And as I explained something to somebody, they were a little disappointed when I told them that I had voted no. They said, you did what? I said, yeah. And then I told them why, and right. they said, oh, that's right, that's right. Exactly. <laughs> so when you tell them why, they'd be like, the light bulb goes off. Absolutely. You know? And, you know, but, but there, there are just times people are just so sanitized to a lot of issues in, <clears throat> until it hit them. There may be a lot of women who might not even pay this, this issue any attention and not understanding reproductive health care and what they're going to do with their gynecologists and, 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 and how they deal with that, that OBGYN doctor from this point on could have an effect on their life. Well, it's going to have an effect as to whether doctors stay in the state of Alabama. Exactly. OBGYNs in the state of Alabama. You may start to see OBGYN units just start to shut down at hospitals. Absolutely. Because those doctors are going to be afraid to right. deal with anything. Because if you go into your, your OBGYN and you get a, a D and C, C right. you call it where you, they scrape the uterus out or whatever. But what, what if you were pregnant when you, when, when you did that? You know, right. but you were, you, were, you were having other problems or whatever and it indicated that the doctor needed to do that. Well, the doctor is putting him or herself in a position to have committed a class A felony. Right. The bill is so, is, it, it, it is so vague that what about, it, it, it... What about it, in vitro it, with right. all those eggs? That's right. What happens in that situation when, when they don't use an egg over here and they just destroy that egg? That's an abortion That's because that, could, that egg could be life. That's right. Because a lot of times eggs are put in and to take a sperm to be able to see which one is going to catch. Absolutely. So they can go back and then implant it back into the mother's womb. So the, but the rest of those eggs may be being destroyed. So is a doctor going to be put, to, put in jail for destroying those eggs? Is that abortion? But see, as you said, there are consequences to what they're doing, but they obviously hadn't thought it through. But then, you know, that doesn't surprise me because look at all the bills that have passed with right. unintended consequences where they had to come back and try to fix it. After we, the Democrats, really tried to tell them and warn them, and it's like we get a chance to say, well, we tried to tell you, tell you, but you yes. just won't listen. But that's because it's so political. Right. And they have a Republican agenda that they will fall lock and step to make sure it happens. You're exactly right. You're exactly right. And, 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 and I just, again, want to applaud those men on that side who did vote for the amendment. That's and true. I'm, I don't know where they're going to be on the final passage. 
Well, you know, I'm sure they're going to I don't know where they're going to be on the final pass. I'm sure it's going to be a 27. Seven to whatever over here, right? (laughs) No, 27. You know, somebody said when I was on uh, doing an interview last week at MSNBC, said that um, Siri's trying to talk to me. Said that uh, I, I specifically said 27 white male Republicans. Is that not the truth? That's the truth. <laughs> it is the truth. But you know, I, I and I, I love my Republican brothers. You know, we all get along very fine. But I have to tell you, I just truly still believe deep in my heart that there were more of them who wanted to vote for that amendment. They got on them over the weekend. And I have to tell you, I applaud Senator Ward, Senator Jones, Senator McClendon, and Senator Marsh for voting for that amendment. And I want all of their, the women in their districts to know it was them who voted for that amendment. That would have been an exception for incest and rape. And those men were Senator Marsh, Senator Ward, Senator McClendon, and Senator Jones. So I thank you all for having the courage to do that. I just know that, you know, when these type bills come before us, you know, it's, it, you, you get really tired, you get really frustrated, and you really feel like you're just running in place, not going anywhere. But you know, all seven of us that are here now, because Senator Dunn is out sick, But all seven of us here know that we have to continue to fight the good fight. We know that there are many, many Alabamians who are depending on us and who are looking to our leadership to continue to fight that good fight. And as long as I got breath in me, Senator Smitherman, who's who's over there now, as long as I've got breath in me and I know that God is using me in this capacity, I'll be right here to fight the good fight. And I know you will too. Well, Senator, I, I, um, it just, it, what concerns me is that, is that there was some good, not, you know, whatever you think about all of them, there was some very good amendments offered. They were very good. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I come, always come down on the side of, of, of people versus brick and mortar. And to, to, to send this up to the court for the reasons is in the category of brick and mortar mm-hmm. to address what you just talked about addressing. And we have been discussing, it's talking about people and people. And people. Mm-hmm. And, and I just, I, I, I don't, what I can't understand is that, is that how a issue so sensitive about a mother and about her having no say in what happens to her and what you were talking about and no say in how she's going to deal with what happened to her from now until the rest of her life. That's right. She has no say whatsoever. In some kind of way, we think that that's the right thing to do to a person. I just, I just, I wish, I wish, I wish, it, it's, you know, that reminds me of just like this amendment that I brought up here. How can somebody tell me what's the right thing for me is less than what you said the right thing for everybody else that you list in there? How can you be in good conscience? Tell us that. I mean, how in your good conscience? So what that says is that you don't have a mind of your own. You don't know how to think for yourself, right? What you what you say about the process is that it's no consideration of what happened to people. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got twenty three on yours. No, you gonna finish. I was gonna say is this an amendment that we can put on this motion? Yes, it's amazing. Okay. It's amazing, okay. Senator. Okay. All right. And and that that concerns me a whole lot. 
in that regard that that it just concerns me because it's like it doesn't matter it can't matter when you ignore all those amendments none of those things that mention matters mm -hmm. none of it and that's what concerns me that none of it matters I mean there is and I don't see in the and, and what I don't understand I don't see everybody who voted against it inside of them as being that kind of person and yet the will to overcome and be independent enough to yourself and to your that segment of your constituents that that to 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 to, to have that cur it's called courage hmm. to have the courage to stand up for what's purely right about an individual okay Mm -hmm. the courage to do that, not the courage to challenge Roe versus Wade, but the courage to stand up for the person when that that did what I say it may happen, what we say it may happen to them, what has happened to those people that he talked about. Yeah. To you know, in, in the face of all of that, to do this to them, and just act like that that don't exist. I mean, if if that did not bring back home the thoughts, you know, that but, 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 but you know when, what the, what my grandparent used to say. What? But for the grace of God, okay. there go I. God, yes. See. Yes. But for the grace of God, there go I. See. But you know, Senator, it's unfortunate that a lot of people can't empathize. They can't put themselves in somebody else's shoes. And you know you're right? And, you know, thought. until it actually happens to them. Yeah. And I pray to God that oh, we don't never want that they're like not that put that in, in that situation. But, but that's the whole thing. You don't know. Um, you know, you don't know. You know, because it's like, it's like what I was saying up here about the amendment. You know, it's glossed over like, you know, we covered that over there. You know, I mean, I'm just talking about the, the thought process. It had to be to everybody See, that voted I, against I thought all that section should have come out anyway. I was offended by it. Oh, oh, uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, yeah. I got another amendment for that part. Good. You Good. know, just to take it out. Good. You know, but, but I'm saying, I want to say this. I've been here through a lot of governors. And... I've had a chance to go over there to numerous meetings since the date I walked in here. Mm -hmm. So I ain't going to call which one or what or what year it was or anything. But I went to a meeting, and I'll tell you the issue that we were talking about. We were talking about the restoration of voting rights issues. And as I was talking to that particular governor, it's not the one we got now. But as I was talking to that particular governor, I was sitting right by him at the conference room over there. Mm -hmm. And he basically said to me, and it made me feel good because he acknowledged something, and that was the head of our state that nobody in here has acknowledged all day. And he said this. He said... I would like for you to explain to me how, and how that impacts you, how it impacts your constituents. Because you know what he said in so many words? What? He's because I never lived the life of a black person. Right. So I don't know. That's right. I don't have a clue of what impact it affects you, how you feel about it, what's the impact. I don't have a clue. And I proceed, proceed to have that conversation with them. And, I, you know, I'm probably going to be telling who it is. And at the end, they supported it, and that's how we got the first bill. I wasn't a sponsor. Mm -hmm. But that conversation led to that because he, as the chief executive officer of this state, was willing to open his mind 
about this issue and seek some feeling and understanding and appreciate what I share with them. What I share with them. And here with this issue, it was just a total ignoring all of that. Totally insensitive to them people we talked about under the name of we're going to challenge Roe versus Wade. Well, I'm going to tell you something, Senator, and I want you to hold that thought. That's what I want to tell you. You're going to tell me something? You want me to hold this mic until you get back? All right, Senator. I'm right here. How, how much more time do we have oh, for Singleton? You got 16 Six minutes. minutes. Okay. Because uh, I'm going to share something with you. Okay. I only gave you one thing what the court said. I'm going to share this with you. It says here uh, uh, that the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals struck down an Arkansas law in 2015 that banned abortion at 12 weeks of pregnancy. Mm -hmm. It said the court said the ban violated the precedent set in 1992 Supreme Court case that upheld the right of women to choose to have an abortion before fetal viability. The Eighth Circuit wrote, by banning abortion after 12 weeks gestation, the act prohibits women from making the ultimate decision to terminate a pregnancy at a point before viability. North Dakota abortion ban, which banned abortion when a fetal, listen at this, when a fetal heartbeat is detected, that's why they're trying to go ahead with this was also struck down as unconstitutional. In July 2015, the Eighth Circuit Court of Appeals struck down the North Dakota law that banned abortion when a fetal heartbeat is detectable. That's exactly what we this bill, they're trying to say here. They already knocked that down. The Supreme Court knocked that down in 20. What we doing right now, right now, the Supreme Court knocked down in 2015. Right, but now, now, Senator, I have to tell you, you know, as I said, I am not for abortion. I understand what you said. And as, as a mother who's had three sons, I know what each, each, um, what is it, what, what the word, I'm, the, 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 each month feels like, if you, if you will, as the pregnancy, as that baby grows, I know what that feels like. I know when I felt the kicking and, and the moving, you know, so I've not been able to vote um, no on a bill that, have, that, that, that may have come before, come before us that had a time set to say you can do it until that time. And I may have voted oh, I'm no. Saying. And I know I voted no saying that you that a young child needed a, a I think it was under what sixteen and under or whatever I'm needed saying. the permission of their parent. In fact, uh, uh, when I ran for US Senate in two thousand eight, uh, I think it was, was Planned Parenthood or somebody asked me about that question and I didn't I didn't back away from it and I said if the vote was held again I would do it again because I am a mother and not only that that's a child I'm saying so but 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 I do think that within a certain period of time that the woman should have that choice you know but I wouldn't want anybody to take that choice away from me because there are so many different circumstances that we don't know that a person has to, to, to go over and deal with in making a decision for themselves. Keep going. And who knows, my bishop may put me out of my church for saying some of the things I'm saying today, but I truly believe as a woman I should make that right because I truly believe that God gives us free will. And it's so amazing, you can't say that just because a person believes that a woman should have that choice, that they are not a Christian. Because I know that I am a woman of deep spirituality and faith. I think I live that and I walk that every day. So I don't mind someone questioning me with that when I know back during the civil rights time and before how people were lynched and people call themselves Christians and holding a Bible in their hands. Now that 
is not Christianity. But I really wish that we could elect more people who would at least open up their hearts, open up their minds to listen to the other experiences, listen to the other side, because we don't live in a perfect well, in a perfect world, and we sure as heck are not perfect ourselves. Okay. So I, I, you know, I, 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 I understand what you're saying. Yeah. And and, and I, 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 I just kind of want to make I, that clear because I, I think. And, and, you know, but I want to tell you, it's like three months. But I want to just tell you that I believe that myself. Right. I, I've, and I've, you're entitled I've been steadfast since I, the day I've been in here that I believe that the woman ought to have a choice. Yes. Period. But I want to share some more with you. It said the district court issued a preliminary injunction in 2013 to block enforcement of the law. And in April, we're talking about the, the one I just talked about in North Dakota. And in April 2014, struck down the law as an invalid and an unconstitutional measure that cannot withstand a constitutional challenge. The ruling, I just want to read the, the, the last two, which the ruling on North Dakota law, the appeals court affirmed the lower court decision stating because there is no genuine dispute that North Dakota law generally prohibits abortion before viability as the Supreme Court has defined that concept. And because we are bound by the Supreme Court precedent holding. See, that's what they're understanding here. You could appoint 10,000 more new extra, quote, conservative justices. They are not going to come back and, 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 and pass the president of another Supreme Court. Yes, yeah, statutes change. But that's, see, that's, that's where the conflict come in. We are saying that we're going to send this up there so the Supreme Court will make new law. But at the same time, the court is taking an oath that they are going to interpret the law, not make law. And to interpret the law, here's the interpretation right here on this case where they say we're not going past what we interpreted the law. It's just that simple. That's what they're saying here in that case. And anybody want to question that, pull, get them to pull the case. I'm reading straight out of the case. It says that the next one is uh, 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 also is one more that, that, that it talked about uh, that that took place. Uh, uh, let's see, it was three of them. I said North Dakota, I had Arkansas, and let's see, there was one more that I'm, I'm looking for in here. Why and also, looking? also, not only the cost, not only the cost that we're going to pay this way for that amount, they turned around and said that, uh, 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 they had to pay to the plaintiff to the defense lawyers, mm -hmm. in that case, mm -hmm. they had to pay $1.2 mm -hmm. to the defense lawyers. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to spend that money, and we're going to turn around and pay the other side lawyers millions of dollars as well after we lose. While, and then, you, that, that, while, while you won't give retired educators talk to me. a cost of living adjustment, which talk they haven't me. had since 2007. Now, you are talking about senior citizens. Correct. And when you get in those later years, you know, particularly in, in the United States of America and in this day and age, you've got medications to pay for, which some of them may have to even choose between paying for their medicine and buying food. They have to pay people to perhaps take them somewhere if they don't have relatives or sons or daughters to do that for them. While the price of everything else is going up. How can you not have a heart for that? Well, when you because look at God knows if, if if they're blessed, they're gonna get to be elderly one day too. But see, the problem is this: is that is that we only have there's only 16 of Alabama 54 rural counties have hospitals provided obstacle obstetrician mm -hmm. service uh, or obstetrical. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So. You see where we're headed? Oh, yes. We, we, we keep losing on this end. We want to require people to use the services, but we don't want to provide services 
Well, we had 13 rural hospitals to close or 13 hospitals to close because we didn't expand Medicaid. That's right. I mean, we yeah. ranked. Even, even a bill that I had we, sponsored three different sessions to give people the right to vote on whether or not they wanted to increase their property taxes to go towards Medicaid expenses we or were, Medicaid purposes. Yeah. Wouldn't even let it go. Wouldn't let it get out of committee. And all that would have been, Senator, was $15 per year on a property that's valued at $50,000, which, as you know, we can write off that $15, that 15 extra dollars on our federal income tax. So it would have been a wash. So why not let the people vote on that? Don't pick and choose what you want them to vote on. Mm -mm. And see, the, and the health issues we were talking about is, is, is that is said that Alabama has the highest rate of cervical cancer mortality mm -hmm. in the nation with over 100 deaths every year. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that black women die at twice the rate of white women in Alabama said that we are ranked fifth in infant mortality in the whole country. We are 13th in ma maternal mortality. And we have the ninth highest teen birth rate in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we, that it, uh, also, uh, let's see what else we have on here. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, So I, I, it just concerns me that we we don't deal with these issues, that that we think the most important issue of this legislative day and which legislative day this house. We used to have that up there. What this, the computer program don't put it up there no more. Nineteen, but you know it used to be up there. Yeah, you can look up there and see what legislative day we had. All this modern stuff they just eliminated that, but but. On the 19th legislative day. Yes, sir. Okay, the 19th day. This the 19th day. Yeah. That we said that out of everything that we got to deal with, everything that needs this attention, budgets, that this is the most important thing going up the road to test Roe versus Wade. I mean, the most important thing. For Nothing this state. else on the calendar. I'm sorry, I mean, Mr. President. May I dialogue with the gentleman? Thank you very much. That's your mic. I understand. I okay. Just, okay. Just back. I want to respect the desk. I got you. <laughs> it's your mic. And, right. and, 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 and we got to keep conscious of the time. Right. You know, but but I, I just don't understand that. I, 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 can't, I can't get a feel. I can't get a feel for that. You know. I understand that they're, they're, they're circling up a close petition on us right now, so. Oh, I, I, that, I mean, that's. I, I, I figured that, you right. know, I, if you got if if you got a situation where we don't talked about everything that we've talked about, these statistics, we've talked about how people dying and everything else, and if and if and if that if that if that don't touch, if reality that don't touch, well, you know, you know, it ain't no problem about that, right? <laughs> you know, like the only. Only thing about that, you know, I'm gonna tell you something. You know, when when those things when those things go in, Senator. Yes. Senator Smith, Sen Senator Singleton, uh, we have a uh, cloture petition filed. Secretary, read the uh, petition. Petition to close debate. We, the undersigned members of the Senate Rules Committee, petition the Senate pursuant to Senate Rule 20 that debate on the pending measure, House Bill 314, shall cease at 8:33 o'clock on. May 14, 2019, signed Senators Wagner, Allen, Livington, Schofield, Reed. Mr. President. Or. We like, the, I'm sorry. Let me. Marshall, you finish? Okay. All right, Senator Singleton. We'd like to speak to the motion. Yeah, you're recognized. I yield to the gentleman to finish with All right, you. Senator Smith. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I also, uh, when it's time at the end of that, then I I won't do like you yourself. I'm gonna I'm gonna be right here. <laughs> if I had to print me out a little sign, or if I had to kind of you know you had to hit the gavel and sell them out of order. I'm gonna right. make sure that this here I want it read to the fullest extent. Gotcha. It ain't but five or six or seven pages, but I want to read all the way. So I'm I'm kind of giving a hint. Yes, sir. You know everybody here can hear me, but just in case I'm gonna be right here. 
to get the bill read at length. Yeah, I'm saying that now. I want it read at length, but that I know it ain't the proper time now. Right. So I'm just kind of pre-introducing to be ready for me to know that I'm going to say it. Time he stopped. Time he said that the time when he said up, oh, I said I need to be read, please. Okay, I'm going to be right behind you. I ain't going to interrupt you now because you're in charge. But I'm going to be right on your tail. You know I'm like a car be on high them trucks and be riding on the tailwind and that big old transfer truck that pull it on down there. I'm going to let you pull me right on into that. All right? But but getting back to what I was saying, that, 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 that you know, I'm, I, it concerns me. It concerns me. And what concerns me is how we can rally, we as the body can rally so tight around the fact that we need to close your folks for this. But at the same time, we don't talk about we need to stay in here and, 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 and battle for, like you said, retired educators. It's the same thing, you know, I, 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 it's the same thing what, you, what we got now. That's, that uh, it's going to be some stuff. Let me put it this way. It's going to be a few things that going to come back from the house, most likely. Yes, it is. That's going to be better than when they left here. Yep. And, it, and, and, and all I'm going to say is that, is that where are these same people who are going to be willing to try to provide the extra things that the house has provided that's going to help people that we didn't do for whatever reason. You know, I'm not saying somebody was against it. We just didn't do it. You know, just that simple. You know, where are those, where is this same tenacity to stick together to do that? Now, now this is, you know, we each have been put down here to try to represent people. And the unfortunate part, what goes back to reapportionment, is that all the people who may be different in philosophy, philosophies in, in, in many districts are just totally ignored for four years. These, all these districts are not all Democrat. That's right. And all these districts are not all Republican. That's right. Mine, I, I got, I, I represent got the most this, diverse I, district. I represent the city of Homewood. I represent part of Hoover, Ross Bridges. You know, and I guarantee you that in Republican votes down there is about 99%. Mm -hmm. But I represent issues for them. I represent issues for people in Birmingham, people in Bessemer, and all points south, okay, as well. And so my point is, is that that's our job to find a balance. Right. The balance in this is the safe and healthy of a woman, regardless of what you whether you're going to vote for the be abortion bill itself, for, for the, how you feel about abortion itself, but the, but the health and safety of a person, we can't even put something on for that because under the name that we got a clean bill because we got to test Roe versus Wade, they're going to lose. I um, keep telling people that. that, that that's going to happen. And, and the bad part about the bill ain't going to even take no effect because they're going to stay tied up in court so long, so many years, that she, we'll be on, going to do another election before this bill here, if, it, it, with all the back and forth appeals and things that's going to take place, it's going to be a long time. And then I guarantee you when they get up there, because they've already heard a similar case in the past, that they may not even hear this case. Man, look at him. They may not even hear it. People just don't understand how hard it is to undo presidents. And how hard to get before the Supreme Court. How hard it is to get before the Supreme Court. You know, this, this little stuff here we're doing here, we're just going to spend money for nothing. Exactly. And let me throw this at you. I don't know why we think as a state, because, listen at this, because the court may have a favorable panel in our opinion that has been placed so that they would address this issue. Listen at this. If the panel rejected the president who appointed them because that didn't apply, right. all them immigration, all that stuff he tried to do, they rejected every, all but about two little, little things. Right. They rejected all of that. Why do you think 
that the panel changing gonna do something about a bill that's already been filed unconstitutional and the president been set the precedence has been set in that decision and they've had a chance to rule on that precedence and they ruled a certain way they ain't finna do nothing different and yes i'm gonna show sure do it i you know i didn't do it in the last three but i'm gonna get up here every day and ask for five minutes more of personal privilege and tell you i told you so there you go i'm gonna say it every day now once that happened i'm gonna say it every day i told you that's all i'm gonna say and then say thank you mr president go sit down i'm gonna get up and say i told you then the next day now go sit down what is the clock on the uh, you know clock time on the cloture petition 8 30. okay okay I'm sorry, Senator, I just didn't know what our time was. Oh, is it? We don't reduce the time to 15 minutes? 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes? 20 minutes on the closure petition. You know, we used to have some time ready to talk. Now we don't. <laughs> right. I keep saying this. I keep saying this now. And see, and see, I keep saying this. And I think that it's probably ignored. I, I used to think that at least it was being thought of, but it's being ignored. We don't have no choice with the 20 minutes. And the, hey, I'm trying to like my, remember I said Lil Ebony? Yeah. I feel into some Ebonics now, gotcha. right now. I got gotcha. you. All right. With the little bit of old time that they're giving us, we don't have no choice but to make it a cumulative of time. Right. If I got 15 minutes here and 10 minutes there, that means I got to deal with four issues before I can stay up here an hour. That's right. And I got to do it long enough so that the cumulative will add all up. No matter if you close on every one of them, if closure process costs 45 minutes, well, you just have to start closing on everything and take the whole 45 minutes or 50 minutes. That's all I'm saying. You know, that's all. So we come in at 12 and leave at midnight, we pay 12 bills. That's right. We may need to pay 20, but we can't pay up at 12 because the closure process. I mean, that's if that's the way it's going to be now, I, I can I understand the process. We can do an hour. I'm going to be what? You know, hey, hey you want to close me? Fine. Then I'm going to have to do that. I ain't got no choice. I don't have a choice. You don't leave me one. You know, when you don't want to consider nothing, on something that's life-threatening that this is to people, you don't leave me a choice. Don't get personal, don't get upset with me. You, you know, let me tell you what I do. And I ain't done it this, this session, and I'm going to start doing it. Every chance I get each day that we have a session. You remember, I used to do this. I used to come in on Tuesday, the moment person privilege, I said, Roger Smitherman. Senate, Senate District 18, reporting for duty. It's my objective to take your work assignment, which is the special order calendar, your tools, which is these rules and regulations, and be successful as I can in representing the people in Senate District 18. Okay? That's no so matter what they are, that, you heard me say that. I said, I have my hard hat. I got, I had one. I had it new. I had that's, grandma. That sounds like a slowdown to me, baby. Doc, hey, I, <laughs> hey, I'm gonna take whatever tools you give me. If you give me 30 seconds, I'm gonna take every 30 seconds. Okay. So we get, you know, we getting a little, we getting a little in a different mode. Now I'm gonna take a little song that you statement you used to say. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the hunters out there. Yes, sir. You and I have been hunted today. And we're going to be game, honey game today, because they're going to close us. Yep. But no you know this when... process has a way that as you get close to when the Constitution kicks in, as your saying said, ain't no fun when the we rabbit got, got the, the gun. gun. Yes, see? sir. We got to look see, down see, that barrel. We got the rabbits right now. But yes, it's going to come a time in the process we'll get the gun. Yeah, we're going to get the gun. <laughs> we gonna get, they're going to have the gun for 25, 26 days. But we're going to have a two days. We're going to have the gun now. We're going to have the gun. We're going to have the gun. The gun going to be know, in our hands. I mean, it's done been proven. <laughs> it's done been proven for eight years. No matter how you twist it, how they come and say, well, we're going to let them do this. No matter how they, the Constitution is going to get us to the point well, we gonna have the gun just as even as everybody else, basically. That's right. 26 and 6 don't matter. That's right. It can be 34 and 1, and the same effect, okay? 
Same effect. Same effect. Okay? Ain't no fun. Ain't no fun. You got to look down that barrel. You got to look down the barrel. The same barrel you had on the rabbit, you got to look down that barrel yourself. That's right. Ain't no fun. Now, the part that really ain't no fun, it really ain't no fun, and when you when the process started on the first day of the session. Uh-huh. See. <laughs> ain't no fun. Oh no. See. Well, you know, starting tomorrow could be the first day of the session for us. Could. That could be the possibility. See. I think we're moving too fast anyway. And and you know, and you ever notice when you get uh what that is anyway. And and you know, and you ever notice when you get uh what that is? It's something about I don't know if it's mosquitoes or something. You get bit you have so long you get immune to the medicine. Yeah. Well you remember you remember one year when 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 and, and I I'm just picking a figure, I may not be accurate. You remember one year I think they closed yours about two hundred and twenty five. Oh without times. a doubt. Two hundred and twenty five was... times. But you remember at the end of the year, we set up with 150 people of local legislation. That's that, right. That, 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 that we couldn't move. <laughs> On the 26th day. <laughs> Hello. See, 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 see I, I, I'm trying to share new folk with, with where that can go. So don't get carried away with this, you know, flipping, flopping, and saying, hey, we just pop them and go on. Because, hey, right. there are consequences by, that we have to respond. That's right. We don't have a choice. Because we didn't close you our own cell. That's right. We didn't do this to ourselves. No, we didn't. So very, you know how they say that? For every action is a what? Opposite equal It's a reaction. reaction. It's an opposite equal okay. reaction. So don't think of slap somebody in the face and their wives say, hey, let's go home and enjoy ourselves. We really slapped them in the face. That's right. No, oh, no, they don't have them now. Don't get carried away. <laughs> they don't go back and be like this now. That don't happen. Woo. That don't happen now. No. It ain't personal. No, it ain't. They, what they going to take telling us? This ain't personal. It ain't personal. And I don't take it personal. It ain't personal. But it ain't going to be, don't get mad at me. It's the process. When I start the process, you you're go. doing the process. Right. You don't want me to be mad at you. That's right. And I ain't going to be mad at you. But don't get mad at me. That's right. I want to say that loud and clear. Don't get mad at me. You know, because, because it, you know, you, look here. You know what I always say now. When you open up Pandora's box, more, this is Pandora right here. Right. But more than Pandora going to rise out that box. That's right. You just want Pandora out the box. That's right. But something else coming out there too. That's right. And that's what I'm trying to help people, help people, help people to something else coming out of there too. But you know, it ain't going to be Pandora. I fought us because, you know, when we knew a bill like this was coming, we would start the day out. That's right. I know. It would have it would have taken them at least two hours before they could have gotten to this bill going through the order. But, but I personally thought that there would be enough people right. who at least was concerned about the amendment. Right. And about really what is these people gonna do. Well last week it was. See. They just got worked on over the weekend. Well, I understand. Yeah. I understand. You let them go home. The one thing about the Republican Party, boy, they will whoop their people in line. <laughs> Well, I, I, I kind of knew when we came in this evening that the whole day would be a part of educating. I'm going to use the educating. Yeah. You use whoop. I use educate. Okay, I'm Educate sorry. enough okay. You're right. people in the manner you I want to correct. educate them so that they will be agreeable with the approach that you're trying to take. Right. Okay, so I I, I, I kind of figured that. When I saw that 335, I, you know, look, man, I've been there 24 years. I know what the deal is. Right. Okay, and this ain't my first rodeo. Right. And so I, I knew what I knew what was happening, you know, and, and the thing about it, I still thought that there was enough people. I did, personally. No talking to nobody or nothing. I said, surely, that can't be 21 people or more that don't care about that's happening to ladies. Regardless of what you're trying to do with this up there at the court, I just couldn't believe that they would think that that was more important than that those things that that amendment was trying to do. But it's obvious that that's not the case. And I, so that's fine. But I'm just saying now, you know, when you do things like this, it causes problems. Because for every action, there's a reaction, okay? Yep. That's all I'm saying. 
So, you know, I don't think that we initiated any action other than just sitting up and doing what we're doing. But I think that that that, that action, you know, may institute a reaction, you know. And, and still, 11 days is a long time, or five, where they may sign Lee early or whatever. But the number they we got 11 days before the session is over with. And, and that's a long time. Long time. That's a long time that's in this long process time. here. A lot can happen between now and then. Right. See, because the only way you're going to get out early is ignore some stuff and just do A, B, or C. Right. Or do all you want to do. And go home. And, and, and fast away and go home. So, so right now, we're not necessarily looking at doing all we can do fast and go home based on what's happening. So it may be the other way around. There's a lot of BIRs still out there because not one budget has passed yet. Oh, yeah. From a lot of 20 minutes. That's right. 10 minutes or whatever they give us on the BIR these days. That's right. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of time. A lot of had them titled red. red and Title everything red. coming out of the committees and 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 uh, all those other house messages and all of that and all local bills and them a lot of days to have the general read too. That's right. We could we could spend one day. We could spend half a day just talking about local bills and being closed every day on each one of those. That's right. Just on local bills. Just on those alone. Not even trying to kill folk local bills, no, but just talking on them. them. No, just talking on them. We want time. We don't just want time. to your bill. That's right. So I'm, I'll talk an hour and turn around and vote on your bill for you. That's yeah. right. You know, ain't nobody trying to kill nobody to be. So I'm, subject to come up here, I'm subject to come up here tomorrow when Jabbo goes to, when, I mean, when the senator goes to the mic to say that he wants unanimous consent to not have the general read. I must intend to object it and have this general read because I want, I might want this general read. And that would be a long, that's a whole day there already. That's correct. If the general got to be read. That's a tool in the toolbox. Yeah. They just don't understand that it's simple that we could do. Now they may they may try to I think it's some kind of maneuver in there about the drone. It's something in there. But if it is then you know of course we, we get the roll call vote. But there's no it's just a unanimous consent they ask for. And you gotta do but object. Yeah. But they may try to call for a vote though. Well, well it's okay. We'll we we'll, we we'll, we'll test the rule in. I know that's right. <laughs> I know that's right. We never tested that rule. That's right. We this, this, we can use this as an educational process with the rules. Yes. That's all. It's a learning process. That's all it is. Just a little learning process. You know. So I, I know I, 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 sometimes people don't think about that kind of thing. Senator Smitherman, we got about 30 seconds. So if you want to, okay, you want a motion to on the bill be read at length. Is that right? Is that yes? Yes, sir. I would like to. At the, I would just like to say to all the women hey, of the hey. state of Alabama, I'm sorry. Do you? Okay. Sure. Okay. I'm up. We like roll call vote. Sec yeah, secretary, call the roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen, Mr. Barfoot, Mr. Beasley, Mr. Burkett, Mr. Butler, Mr. Chambliss, Mr. Chastain, Ms. Coleman Madison, Ms. Dunn, Mr. Elliott, Ms. Figures, Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger, Mr. Holly, Mr. Jones, Mr. Livingston, Mr. Marsh, Mr. McClendon, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts. Sanders Fortier, Mr. Schofield, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shelnut, Mr. Singleton, no. Mr. Smitherman, no. Mr. Stutz, 
Mr. Wagner. Mr. Ward. Mr. Watley. Mr. Williams. All right, 24 uh, six nays, culture petitions adopted. Uh, Secretary, read the bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Smitherman. The attend acted by the legislature of Alabama, Section 1. This act shall be known as the Alabama Human Life Protection Act, Section 2. Legislative findings. This state statute criminalizing abortion, Section 13-13-7, Code of Alabama 1975, has never been repealed. It has remained unenforceable as a result of the U.S. Supreme Court decision in Roe v. Wade, 410 U.S. 113, 1973, and its progeny, which struck down as unconstitutional a Texas statute criminalizing abortion, and which effectively repealed by implication, and made unenforceable all other state statutes criminalizing abortion. B. On November 6, 2018. Electors in this state approved by a majority vote a constitutional amendment to the Constitution of Alabama of 1901 declaring and affirming the public policy of the state to recognize and support the sanctity of unborn life and the rights of unborn children. The amendment made it clear that the Constitution of Alabama of 1901 does not include a right to an abortion or require the funding of abortions using public funds. C. In present state law, Section 13-6-1, Code of Alabama 1975, defines a person for homicide purposes to include an unborn child in utero at any stage of development, regardless of viability. D. In the United States Declaration of Independence, the principle of natural law that all men are created equal was articulated. The self-evident truth found in natural law that all human beings are equal from creation was at least one of the bases for the anti-slavery movement, the women's suffrage movement, the Nuremberg War Crimes Trials, and the American Civil Rights Movement. If those movements had not been able to appeal to the truth of universal human equality, they could not have been successful. E. Abortion advocates speak to women's rights, but they ignore the unborn child, while medical science has increasingly recognized the humanity of the unborn child. F. Recent medical advances prove a baby's heart starts to beat at around six weeks. At about eight weeks, the heartbeat can be heard through an ultrasound examination. A fetal Doppler can detect a fetal heartbeat as early as 10 weeks. G. Ultrasound imaging shows the developing child in utero. H. As early as six weeks after fertilization, fetal photography shows the clear development of a human being. The Alabama Department of Public Health publication Did You Know? demonstrates through actual pictures at two week intervals throughout the entire pregnancy the clear images of a developing human being. I, it is estimated that six million Jewish people were murdered in German concentration camps during World War II. Three million people were executed by Joseph Stalin's regime in Soviet gulags. Two million five hundred thousand people were murdered during the Chinese Great Leap Forward. In 1958, one million five hundred thousand to three million people were murdered by the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia during the 1970s, and approximately one million people were murdered during the Rwandan genocide in 1994. All of these are widely acknowledged to have been crimes against humanity. By comparison, more than 50 million babies have been aborted in the United States since the Roe decision in 1973, more than three times the number who were killed in German death camps, Chinese purges, Stalin's gulags, Cambodian killing fields, and the Rwandan genocide combined. J. The cases of Roe v. Wade and its progeny have engendered much civil litigation and legislative attempts to rein in so-called abortion rights. Roe v. Wade attempted to define when abortion of an unborn child would be legal. Judges and legal scholars have disagreed and dissented with its finding. Section 3. As used in this act, the following terms shall have the following meanings. 1. Abortion. The use or prescription of any instrument, medicine, drug, or any other substance or device, with the intent to terminate the pregnancy of a woman known to be pregnant with knowledge, that the termination by those means will with reasonable likelihood cause the death of the unborn child. The term does not include these activities, if done with the intent to save the life or preserve the health of an unborn child, remove a dead unborn child, to deliver the unborn child prematurely to avoid a serious health risk to the unborn child's mother or to preserve the health of her unborn child. 
The term does not include a procedure or act to terminate the pregnancy of a woman with an ectopic pregnancy, nor does it include the procedure or act to terminate the pregnancy of a woman when the unborn child has a lethal anomaly. 2. Ectopic pregnancy. Any pregnancy resulting from either a fertilized egg that has implanted or attached outside a uterus, or a fertilized egg implanted inside the cornu of a uterus. 3. Lethal anomaly. A condition from which an unborn child would die after birth, or shortly thereafter, or be stillborn. 4. Medical emergency. A condition which, in reasonable medical judgment, so complicates the medical condition of the pregnant woman, that her pregnancy must be terminated to avoid a serious health risk, as defined in this act. 5. Physician. A person licensed to practice medicine and surgery, or osteopathic medicine and surgery in Alabama. 6. Serious health risk to the unborn child's mother. In reasonable medical judgment, the child's mother has a condition that so complicates her medical condition that it necessitates the termination of her pregnancy to avert her death or to avert serious risk of substantial physical impairment of a major bodily function. This does not include a condition based on a claim that the woman is suffering from an emotional condition or a mental illness which will cause her to engage in conduct that intends to result in her death or the death of her unborn child. However, the condition may exist if a second physician, who is licensed in Alabama as a psychiatrist with a minimum of three years of clinical experience, examines the woman and documents that the woman has a diagnosed serious mental illness and because of it, there is reasonable medical judgment that she will engage in conduct that could result in her death or the death of her unborn child. If the mental health diagnosis and likelihood of conduct is confirmed as provided in this act, and it is determined that a termination of her pregnancy is medically necessary to avoid the conduct, the termination may be performed and shall be only performed by a physician licensed in Alabama in a hospital, as defined in the Alabama Administrative Code, and to which he or she has admitting privileges. 7. Unborn child, child, or person. A human being, specifically including an unborn child in utero at any stage of development, regardless of viability. 8. Woman. A female human being, whether or not she has reached the age of majority. Section 4. A, it shall be unlawful for any person to intentionally perform or attempt to perform an abortion except as provided for by subsection B. An abortion shall be permitted if an attending physician licensed in Alabama determines that an abortion is necessary in order to prevent a serious health risk to the unborn child's mother. Except in the case of a medical emergency, as defined herein, the physician's determination shall be confirmed in writing by a second physician licensed in Alabama. The confirmation shall occur within 180 days after the abortion is completed and shall be prima facie evidence for a permitted abortion. Section 5. No woman upon whom an abortion is performed or attempted to be performed shall be criminally or civilly liable. Furthermore, no physician confirming the serious health risk to the child's mother shall be criminally or civilly liable for those actions. Section 6. An abortion performed in violation of this act is a Class A felony. B. An attempted abortion performed in violation of this act is a Class C felony. Section 7. This act shall not apply to a physician licensed in Alabama performing a termination of a pregnancy or assisting in performing a termination of a pregnancy due to a medical emergency, as defined by this act. Section 8. The construction of existing statutes and regulations that regulate or recognize abortion in Alabama that are in conflict with or antagonistic to this act shall be repealed as null and void and shall recognize the prohibition of abortion as provided in this act. If this act is challenged and enjoined pending a final judicial decision, the existing statutes and regulations that regulate or recognize abortion shall remain in effect during that time. Section 9. Although this bill would have as its purpose or effect the requirement of a new or increased expenditure of local funds, the bill is excluded from further requirements and application under Amendment 621, now appearing as Section 111.05 of the Official Recompilation of the Constitution of Alabama of 1901, as amended because the bill defines a new crime or amends the definition of an existing crime, Section 10. This act shall become effective six months following its passage and approval by the governor or its otherwise becoming law. Senator Chambliss. Mr. President, I move for final passage using the long roll. Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Albritton. 
Mr. Allen. Aye. Mr. Barfoot. Aye. Mr. Beasley. Aye. Mr. Burkett. Aye. Mr. Butler. Aye. Mr. Chambliss. Aye. Mr. Chastain. Aye. Ms. Coleman Madison. Ms. Dunn. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Holly. Mr. Jones. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh. Mr. McClendon. Mr. Melson. Mr. Orr. Mr. Price. Mr. Reed. Mr. Roberts. Sanders Fortier. Mr. Schofield. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Shellnut. Mr. Singleton. Mr. Smitherman. Mr. Stutz. Mr. Wagner. Mr. Ward. Mr. Watley. Mr. Williams. Twenty-five ayes, six nays, one abstention. House Bill 314 passes. Mr. President. Yes, Senator Chambers. voted on the prevailing side. I move to reconsider and lay on the table. All those in favor? All right. Secretary, call the roll. Mr. Albritton. Mr. Allen. Mr. Barfoot. Mr. Beasley. Mr. Burkett. Mr. Butler. Mr. Chambliss. Mr. Chastain. Ms. Coleman Madison. Ms. Dunn. Mr. Elliott. Ms. Figures. Mr. Gavan. Mr. Gudger. Mr. Holly. Mr. Jones. Mr. Livingston. Mr. Marsh. Mr. McClendon, Mr. Melson, Mr. Orr, Mr. Price, Mr. Reed, Mr. Roberts, Sanders Fortier, Mr. Schofield, Mr. Sessions, Mr. Shellnut, Mr. Singleton, Mr. Smitherman, Mr. Stutz, Mr. Wagner, Mr. Ward, Mr. Watley, Mr. Williams. Uh, 25 ayes, 7 nays. Uh, the motion to table passes. Senator DeMarsh. Uh, Mr. President, I first want to compliment this body on the way they held, uh, handled a very sensitive, important issue and the way they conducted themselves, everybody in here today. I re respect everybody in this body for the way that was done. Uh, I have a Senate Bill 282. I would ask to be brought up. Uh, it's it's uh, out of order. All right, any objection? All right, hearing none, so ordered. Secretary okay. calls Senate Bill 282, correct? That's correct. On page 25 of the calendar, Senate Bill number 282. Senator Marsh. Uh, Senator Reed, would you please explain this bill before we uh, go any further on the BIR? Mr. President. Senator Reed. Thank you, Mr. President. There's been a piece of legislation that we worked on for a couple of years, actually, that specifically had to do with Jefferson County fire districts and an issue that was related to a back and forth associated with the Forestry Association. And uh, we've reached an agreement that is agreeable to the fire districts as well as to the Forestry uh, Association. And so with that, that's this legislation, Senator Marsh, and I just have a simple amendment that I'd like to offer. Well, we, we need to get the BIR adopted yes, first. Sir. With... Senator Smitherman. All right. You're recognized. You want to 